We win souls in their numbers. In the name of Jesus, lives will be transformed. Men will come in direct encounter with the power of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, they will come in direct contact. They will come under the power and the influence of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, Masute Lebo, Ramakata Yalabate, Engalabora Kusitaya, and for, for those other categories of people, maybe they are not necessarily not saved, maybe they are saved, but they are unstable. We pray that as they come into this conference, the Holy Ghost will strengthen them and their ways are straightened in the name of Jesus. They are strengthened by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Masute le coromando, remakola rakushataya, vale gradika la raboso, in the name of Jesus. Mande kolo barakas. Suze, Ila Gragado, Ramakata Yala Rabate, Rende Boka Suze. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. I said, In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Quickly, we are going to pray again from that same portion that I read earlier. It says that the whole the truth that is meant for you in this meeting. And it is the Holy Ghost that will guide you into that truth. Not only that, it will tell you things to come. I want you to open your mouth. I'm going to pray that, Father, in this meeting, I will be ministered unto. I will not miss my word. I will not miss my moment. In the name of Jesus, the Holy Spirit is guiding me into all truth. In the name of Jesus. Remember, the scripture says you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, such truth that I need that will, that will translate to liberty for me, that will make me free, that will deliver me from foolishness, that will deliver me from obscurity. In the name of Jesus, oh, the Holy Ghost is guiding me. Open your mouth and confess. Say, in the name of Jesus, in this meeting, the Holy Spirit is guiding me into all truth. I am guided into all truth. I am guided into the revelation knowledge of God. In the name of Jesus, in this meeting, the eyes of my understanding are enlightened by the power of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, the eyes of my understanding are enlightened. In the name of Jesus, the Holy Ghost is guiding me, is guiding me, precept upon precept, layers upon layers, in the name of Jesus, Masute Lebo, Ramakata Yala Raboto, Rendebo Sute, Alika Shalabade, Engadore Kuso, Randa Dada, da, Hila Rakata Yala Raboto, Elevrekasote, Rande Malakusha Ladaba, in the name of Jesus, Mandele is enlightened, my eyes open. My ears, they hear the inaudible. In the name of Jesus, Mande Kolomana, Rabakata Yala Daboto, Elevreka Sekete, Engadole Kradi, Rabakata Yala Dadada, Randa Balaborokoto, Elevreka Suze, Harabakata Yala Da, Randa Baleborokoto, Hila Dadada, Rabakata Yala Daboto. Man da 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 da, and da 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 da, da 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 In the name of Jesus, man da la da 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 da. Rabba kata ya la da boto. Ila borakusa, randa ba 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 ba, and da 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 da. Eka la borakoto, and da 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 da, and da 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 da, and da la borakoto. Haramaka shata ya la da bata. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. We also learnt on Sunday. That one of the things that the Holy Ghost does is that it makes us of quick understanding. Quick understanding. We can see that again in the book of Luke. Luke chapter 24, verse 45. The scripture says, Then he opened their mind so they could understand scriptures. I'm proud to this time, if you are familiar with this story, Jesus had been having conversations with them. And they had no clue what he was talking about. They had no clue who was talking with them. The moment Jesus opened their understanding, and it was the Holy Ghost that did it. It was the Holy Ghost who was responsible for that action. You are going to lift up your voice tonight and pray. That Father, in this conference, throughout this conference, you will open my 
understanding that I might understand scriptures. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray. In the name of Jesus, you will enrich my mind. You will enrich my mind. You will enrich my mind. In the name of Jesus, you will make me of quick understanding. You will make me of quick understanding. You will make me of quick understanding. In the name of Jesus, I understand at the speed of light. In the name of Jesus, oh, oh you will make me of quick understanding. In the name name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray. Mashata la karabagadaya. Mangra gado rekoso. Inalada bakata yagado. Remakelebo. You make me of quick understanding. In the name of Jesus, you make me of quick understanding. In the name of Jesus, you make me of quick understanding. You quicken my mind. In the name of Jesus, you enrich the quality of my mind to process information, to process revelation. In the name of Jesus, Masute Lebo, Ramaka Shata Yaladabate, Rendebo, Livro Naraladabata, Rabababa Livre Kete. In the laboracusa, Hele Kradi Kalarabora Kusa Larabate, Ekutu Vradi Kalabato, Rende Manakute, Eli Vradi Kalabaragade, Ende Koto Vradi, Rabakata Bale Borokoto, Ile Ketora Kande, Mashate, Vecole Manora Casuse, Engragado, Rabba Laborokoto Vayagade, Hele Baba Livro Naralabata, Rande Badakusa. Rande Badakusha, Hele Koto, Vrekete Lego Dogado, Imana. Ana na kete gede ende vreke zuze ina nande badakusha taya ina nande graga do 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 ila rakusa yagada rabaka ta yagade ende de legrega de 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 ina nando roko suze ina nde legrega do raka suze ligro nara la la bate mande de 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 ende de 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 Hina la la bata, rande balakusha ta yadada, raba kate borokoto, ende de 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 de, ende de 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 de, hala bara baka taba, raba kata yagada, mandele de 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 de, hela boroko suze, hina la la bata, raba kata yala da bade, ende de 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 de, hina la la bata, raba kata yagade, hela breka suze, hina la la da 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 da. Rabaka Shate, Hele Vreka Zuse, Inande Balakota, Rande Balakushataya, Ende Korobokoso, Hela Vreka Zuse, Hina Rakata Yala Dadada, Rande Balakota, in Jesus' precious name of prayed. We like to hear our voices. Amen. You know, still talking about the Holy Ghost. Is it okay to just dwell on the ministry of the Holy Spirit? I mean, that's all we've been learning. So let's just take advantage of it. You know, Philippians 2 verse 13. It says, For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. You know, this kind of prayer point, they don't attract a lot of response. You know, I know the kind of prayer point I will raise now. This place will be, will be shaking. But you see, these are the prayer points that we need. If you have understanding, if you know what to do, and, and that, not even have an emergency at all. And, 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 and this prayer point, I'm going to pray that Father, in this meeting, I will not just be, um, I will not just be eager to hear. I will not be a forgetful hearer. You know, you can be shouting, mm, mm, mm. and then before you even get to the gate, you are forgotten. It's not to those that do mm, that get the result. It's to the people that do something with the word. You are going to open your mouth and you are going to make this confession. You are going to declare this over your life. That Father, throughout this meeting, I will be a doer of God's word by the Spirit. Remember, you are not doing it in your flesh. It is the Spirit of God in you that helps you both to will and to do. You are going to open your mouth and you are going to declare that in the name of Jesus, I'm a doer. I'm a doer of God's word. I'm a doer of God's word. As I pick up those instructions, I do them. 
in the name of Jesus. I do them. I do them. I do the needful. I will not be a forgetful hearer. In the name of Jesus. Let me hear your voice. Let me hear your voice. I will not be a forgetful hearer. I receive the grace to be a doer of God's word. I do the needful. I do the needful. I carry out necessary instructions. I make the necessary adjustments. In the name of Jesus, as God's word come forth, as my instructions come forth, I receive the grace to do the needful. I receive the grace to make the necessary adjustment. In the name of Jesus, the spirit of God strengthens me. I am strengthened in my spirit to do God's word, to do the needful, to obey God's word. In the name of Jesus, I align, I comply. In the name of Jesus, Masutelebo, Rakata Yakate, Ele Renando, Remakasuta, Lande Gradi, Rababa. And the Bradica Rabacote Ele Vecusha Taya Mande Vrecuso in Ananda Dada Rabacata Yagade in the De Ligro Norola Boto in Aralada Bacate Vele Mando Do Randa Bala Borocoto Ele Vrecatacate Ilaba Mande Boroco Suze in Aralada Lagra Gado Rebocoto Bayagado in Gadora Cusa Malevre Catecate in the name of Jesus Reketebo Randa Bala Boroco Sute Ela Mando Recute Ele Cato Ela Gradi Remacusha Randa Borecuso Taya and the Legra Gada de Ligo Romando Remaco Suze in Aralada Bata Racate Borocoto and the dead, the dead, the dead, and the laborocoto, Rabacata Yala Dada, El Grega de Dada, Mende Laboroco Suze, Ela Rada Dada, Rabacata Yagado, and Dodo do, Ema Nala Suze, El Vrecate, and the dead, the dead, the dead, E Calaboro Cosuze, Inga Rocata Yala Dabate, and the dead, the dead, El Bre. Ela Rakata Yagado, Ela de 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 move of God, the spirit of God flows unhindered throughout this meeting. In the name of Jesus, we declare that throughout this meeting, starting from tonight, we will experience unusual manifest presence of the Holy Ghost and it keeps getting stronger. Day two will be stronger than day one and it keeps getting stronger and stronger and stronger until we get to the climax of it on the last day. In the name of Jesus, we decree and declare in agreement that every anointed servant of God, those that will minister in world, those that will minister in music, those that will minister in any aspect of the service we decree and declare that special unction is released upon them in the name of jesus that the oil of god upon them upon their spirit is refreshed in the name of jesus they minister under the influence of the holy ghost they minister under the under the influence of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus as they open their mouth the Holy Ghost fills their mouth with right words with right words with words for the season with Rema in the name of Jesus no one that will attend this meeting 
will not experience a 360 turnaround. There is no one, no one is permitted to attend this meeting and live the same. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you. Can we put our hands together? Oh, glory, 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 glory. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you for that which you are set to do. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. For in Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. And the church said it loud, Amen. Once again, let me welcome your neighbor to your left and to your right. And say welcome. All right. Uh, quickly, we are starting uh, on our opening summit from the book of Psalm 99. I don't know if we can have it on the screen. Psalm 99. We take only the first five verses. Okay, let's take it together. One, two, go. The Lord reigneth. Let the people tremble. He seated between the cherubims. Let the earth be moved. The Lord is great in Zion and he's high above all the people. Let them praise thy great and terrible name for it is holy. Verse 4. The king's strength also loveth judgment. Thou dost establish equity. Thou executest judgment and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt ye the Lord our God and worship at his footstool for he is holy. Somebody shout hallelujah. Just wave those hands to heaven in anticipation of that which is said to do tonight. Glory, all the honor, Father, we worship you. We worship Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. you are worthy of a praise. You are worthy of a praise. You deserve the glory and the honor. I lift my hands to worship. And I press your holy name. You deserve the glory. And all the honor. Yeah, yeah. I lift my hands to worship. In you are great. You do.
There is healing. The Holy Spirit is there to touch. It's flowing. We this evening. Come on, go ahead and speak in tongues. Just worship him. Give him his love language this evening. Come on. Wherever you are, it's not time to close your mouth. Open your mouth and pour your love on your father. Go ahead and pour your love on your father. Come on and I will worship you, my king, forever and always. Yahweh, you are I will worship you, my King, forever and always. Yahweh, come on, go ahead. You my lift your voice. I will worship you, my King.
Jesus, take your place right here and now. Jesus, stay your place. No one to want but you. No one to God but you. No one to God but you. No one to God but you. Jesus, stay take your, your place. place. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Right here and now. Take your place, oh God. Jesus, stay your Jesus, place. Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. Take your place. your hands and first give him praise oh father i thank you i'm thanking god specifically today because this time last year i couldn't make this meeting but here i am today how about of the righteous will not be cut short. Do you have expectations here tonight? I mean you, not for any other person. Go ahead and express your desires in prayer. The Bible says, what things soever you desire, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive. This is that moment you express your desires in prayers. I'm not sure about you, but one thing I'm sure is that God is here for me and is meeting me at the point of my need. According to my desire, he will grant. It's not one of those meetings. It is God's meeting. And when the Lord calls us to a feast, it's because he's ready. It's more. Are you expressing your desires? Do it in understanding and do it in tongues. There are things my spirit desire that my mind does not yet know. And I'm going to express that in tongues. Yeah, la la bolsa, 
after me should be projected Ephesians 1 18 to 19 do I have people here okay so say it after me according to Ephesians 1 18 to 19 the eyes of my understanding is a light and the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and the exceeding greatness of his power towards me who believe according to the working of his mighty power. I declare that according to scriptures, God's word comes to me today in full and supernatural measures. The word purifies, cleanses, sanctifies, and delivers to me my inheritance in Christ Jesus. Tonight, I submit my mind teaches me and brings me to all truth. I receive unction from the Holy One. As God, my mind is filled with illumination of scriptures and I understand the mysteries of the kingdom of God tonight, tonight I receive a sound mind and access the intelligence of the spirit concerning the season that has come upon the earth as I wait upon the Lord during this conference my strength is renewed he A light and revelation. I declare night by faith that in sin I will. Win. I want you to especially welcome someone by your side. Welcome them to the one of their awakening. Is that how you're going to do it? Welcome their hands together as we walk. Can you clap those hands together one more time? <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Are you glad to be in church? First day of our conference. Celebrate Jesus. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Wonderful, merciful Savior, precious Redeemer. Come 
want everybody to say. Rescue the rescue the souls of men. Say oh, you rescue the souls. Wonderful, merciful, wonderful, merciful Savior. Precious Redeemer, Oh, Spirit, we long to embrace yeah. Falling before Yes Oh, we're falling before Come, say, Lord, comforter
And I will not be sorry. Say it. I will go. Say it. Worship you. Epa. As long as make sure it's your worship, all right? Harataka peketa kaipa. I will yeah, worship you. Make sure it's not your neighbor's worship. Say, I will. Asakapele ketolias. Vai mere de kuatela. Hare kapelia tomi le ketul. Havaratalia beka. As long as I am with you.
Kaita kaka vapata nekeida. Hai vemba watoke ila vekatalisu. Hai mando fila itakamendus kivila. Hara devedeya. Oka bente ke parote iskila. Hai na mamvele itakabe skota. Hare vendo laite meke vila itokabe tali. Hara bataka pelete laita kapatia. Hare vila la. Let everything that we have worship you. Can somebody break into worship? Hey, I am. I am not a cumbier. I am not a cobet. Everything written about you is true and more. Everything spoken about you is for lack of better words. There are no words in mortal tongue that can describe the immortal language in this and express the God of all tribes. Since I have no words to say, I go over. Oh, how can I describe a God who has no beginning, will never end? The God who dwells in light beyond my natural eyes. The God who's wonder makes me wonder. So amazing, still he makes my heart his dwelling place. Oh, how can I, oh, how can I describe the God who has no beginning, will never end? The God who dwells in light beyond my eyes. The God whose wonder makes me wonder. The God whose deeds so amazing. Still it makes my heart his other place. Oh, how can I, oh, how can I describe the God who has no beginning, will never end? The God who dwells in light beyond my eyes. Oh, the God whose wonder makes me wonder. The God whose deeds so amazing. Still he makes my heart. He's well in place. Hello, Elohim. Hello, Elohim. Angels are wondering why this Elohim is mindful of this low him. You know, I'm not tall, but I'm low. That is why he's so mindful of him. Wow, you didn't hear it. Let me say it again. Hello, Elohim. Hello, Elohim. Angels are wondering why this Elohim is mindful of this Elohim. Little did they know that the Elohim lives inside of him. That is why he's so mindful of him. So I will rise. Rise like an edifix as I pray. An edifix as I pray. As I As I pray, Jude one twenty. Say, with the Holy Ghost, I will rise up. 
as I pray in the Holy Ghost. Everybody pray in the Holy Ghost. Ay, 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 Thank you. I will rise. Oh, 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 So if your presence is an ocean, Lord, I want to be drowned in you. I don't know. Say, if your presence is a substance, Lord, I want to overdose. I don't know. You know what? Because I'm tired of the ankle experience. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I'm tired of the kneel experience. I want something more. I'm tired of the ankle experience. Share the cape, lira take veliate. I'm tired of the knee experience. I don't know. If your presence is an ocean, Lord, I want to be drowned in you. Shata kapakatia, ashake the kotori. If your presence is a substance, Lord, I want to overdose. I don't know. I'm tired of the ankle experience. I'm tired of the kneel experience. I don't know. I'm tired of the ankle experience. I want something more. I want something more. I'm tired of the kneel experience. I want something more. I'm tired of the ankle experience. Yeah, that's why I came. I'm tired of the kneel experience. I don't lie. I'm tired of the ankle experience. Tired of the kneel experience. So if your presence is an ocean, 
Lord, I want to be drowned in you. I don't know. Substance. Lord, I want to overdose. I don't know. That's why I came for awake. 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 I get a capirato. I bet the That's why I came for awake. And something can wait for my inside. Oh, that's why I. So from the pages of my heart, let my worship begin, but never end. Oh, from the pages of my heart, let my worship begin, but never end. To the God of all flesh, for He's mine. Yahweh, you are my God, oh, my God, your name is Yahweh, your name is Yahweh, you are my God, oh, oh, My God is in this crime yes, His name is hallowed in the firmament. He's a Passover lamb through space and time. My God is in this crime His name is hallowed in the firmament. Is a Passover lamb through space. Everybody lift your voice from the pages of my heart. Everybody say, Bless my worship, begin my never end. Aya! Oh, hey, 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 hey. From the pages of my heart. Bless my worship. Bless my worship, begin my never end. Hey. To the God. all over this place this evening lift up your hands and just pray in the Holy Ghost pray in the Holy Ghost Mendo Prophet Dina Shadden and us a Bragadina and a Sopragadia let's pray some more in the spirit tonight La Shadde Mantagradina and a Sota Bragadina and a Sopayate Shadde Mendro and a Suste Pragadina and a Sakatalamanda de Riaso 
La se de mana ha bedoso kedina na shaganana ya toya. Lendo bragiso tadena la shata la braga dosa tenda na na Besa tole bende de saka braga dina sata telamana. Sharagani mahato hodena sata de la laya. Sarondo bashaka telemandra na sisto praga dina na Sarondo kebedina na shata braga dina na sota bagade. Limbranda sasto prakinde na shaka talamanda haeda. Soto bragadina na sata pakadina sahaedai. Lasha dena to pragadina na shalagadea. La sodema de kisa attendema sota bagadea. Shedemena nos. Kalida nasa bragadina hasa tedenaya. Saroko ne mesita dina na shaka teba yotaha. Lando shete braga nina o sakite belanai. Agondi basate braga dina shaka talamanaha. Lendo sopeki denas. Sharude na kila masenta kedia. Sarondo shake toba lena na nasite laganosi. Ladina shata braga dina na sakiba daya. Sastola man takide atanaya. Sakatala mana ya toligania. Sarande shadamenda kalame sohote yale. La shadima na kela besondo makole benanaya. Salika de masante kila maya tola mani. Shadema saketa bayana shadenaya. Lande sokeba atenas. Basha demande cobra de yate. Shadamande cole besinde nananaya. Let's pray some more. Let's pray some more. Shadena sobro getile masata gadila hai. La shademante granda sasta pragadela handa hai. Sarande shata telamande kalesa branda dananaya. Sarando shake tabalande nananaya. Sande cole me santa kelamande adadas. La shademante kadibalona nasa yatanaya. Lande Shadrana Sakataba Laganaya. Lande Sata Talamande. La Rose Ketalamanda de Kilama Sata Delaria. Shadenaya. Lift up your hands, pray some more tonight. Mashadina Tabelo Kosmenai. Seradina Lee, La Shabelaganesa Talagaya. Le shidena se peka dusa nanaya. Serono shadika leba sade ganaya. Sade lama shadenaya. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. Thank you for tonight. Thank you for today's that day you've made for us. To rejoice and be glad. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name. Please welcome someone with me tonight. Welcome someone to your left and to your right. Tell them good to see in the house of God. You may be seated. You may be seated. Praise God. Tonight... I'm trusting God that beginning from this evening, heaven will be set to do things in your life as a person and in our lives as a church. Christianity is both personal and corporate. It's a personal, non-transferable adventure. Um, there are things in God that, that are yours, your experiences. There are pathways that God has caught for you. There are races that you have been called to run. And it's not a competition with another person. But there are things that we are also called to do together. It's a body. 
So the eye can't stand alone. The nose can't stand alone. You need to be part of a corporate body to be able to function in your personal assignment. As much as our faith is, is personal, not transferable, there are, there are things that you can only do within the body and there are things that you can only experience when you are connected with other people. My pastor, my pastor, Pastor Bojo, always say that there is no place in scriptures where one person commanded the outpouring of the spirit while they were praying. One person by themselves prayed and the Holy Ghost poured forth on either one person. It doesn't work like that. So there are certain experiences and deposits and they are pouring from the space, from, from, from heaven to our lives that can only happen when we are with other people. So when we set our time like this, one week during the course of the year, to seek the face of God, to be taught by His Spirit, to be taught by anointed vessels. So we're not inviting these people um, just so that we know that we know people in ministry, no. We are bringing them to come and deposit part of what they've experienced in God on us. Because there are certain things that when you seek them, if they are available anywhere on the face of the earth, you have, to go and get the, you have to go and get it where God has put it. God will not give to you something he had given to somebody else on the face of the earth. If you want that thing, it is either you go and meet them where they are, or you try to get them to come to where you are so that they can pour it on you. So that's your idea of this kind of meetings. And, and the awakening as, as a conference, it's designed for, for, it's curated especially by the Spirit of God to, to stir you up. Because to sleep is very easy. That's the very dangerous thing about spiritual sleep. When you are fast asleep, you, are never, you don't even know you are, still, you are out of line. You are out of the faith. You don't even know. It says you should take it to be sure that you are still in the faith. You are still walking with God. That you don't even know the spirit has since left you. Because that's the thing with the things of the spirit. When the spirit comes, you might not even know. When he leaves, you might not also know. Moses didn't know that he had had a massive baptism in the spirit. He didn't know his face was shining like the sun. He had no idea the, the, the level of immersion that had happened to him while he was there on the mount. But people could see it, but he didn't know because you don't connect with these things with your senses. Samson did not even know when the spirit left him. He started shaking himself, wait, waiting for the spirit. He said, he wait not that the spirit had left. The same way, Moses did not even know that his face was glowing. So, these seven nights, beginning from tonight, you should set your eyes like a flint. Be ready so that Jesus in his glory will pour something on you. Meetings like this are at times are organized for just one person or two persons or for a ministry. You know, I remember um, the first time I, I encountered um, God's servant. I think I was in part two or so. It was in, it was, it was running the biggest ministry out of Unilag. And of course, he was everywhere within the campus space. He was out, he was on his way out of university at that time. And we had the honor of having him come. And, and you, you, you know, yes, our fellowship invited him to come and speak to the fellowship. But I was so honored that, okay, I'll talk about that later. And but I, I think that it came because of me and because of this moment. Because there are, there are connections that you will make. There are things God will do, not because of that moment, but, but because of 20 years down the line. So it might not make sense of what will happen tonight. You don't even know why God called you to be here. There was someone that was saying today that last year she couldn't be here, but this year she's here. So you have to be very, very sensitive in your spirit to see to it that whatever God had in his mind for this meeting is reflected in your own life. And one thing that you see consistent in scriptures, particularly with the current ministry of Jesus, the right of majesty, is to ensure that the church is always fresh. The church is alert. The church is empowered. 
the church is at the cutting edge. And we talk about the church, we're talking about the individual members of the church. So as a pastor of this church, it is my desire for everyone to have an encounter with God. For God to bring you into certain experiences. For God to ignite something on the inside of you. There was someone that, um, that I started taking notes in the church, um, maybe like around August of September. And, and she started speaking in one of the Bible study we we're having. And she was speaking with so much fire and so much unction. I was like, wow. So I called her. I said, come. So um, did you pastor on campus? Did you? You said, no. She didn't. I said, no. You, the way you are speaking, you are speaking with this depth of grace and with a lot of fire and unction. He said, no, it was an awakening. It was during awakening that I, I got born again. I said, which one? He said, the awakening. I said, you mean, the, he said, yeah. I said, you mean this anointing is not old? <laughs> because, you know, pastors, you know what I'm talking about. There are times when you hear somebody speaking, you say, oh, this must be an ancient grace. You must be working in this for like 25 years. But you can enter into the grace that somebody had carried for 30 years in a meeting like this. So by jumping into that anointing, you gain 30 years in the realm of the spirit. So as they speak tonight, listen. Hear. There are things that they will teach you. Learn those things. But there are things that cannot be taught. They can only be caught. You can only catch them when you see them with the eyes of your spirit. So be very attentive because we, everybody, everybody on the lineup, they are spirit. So I don't need to begin to give the, reel out their CVs and tell you the kind of stuff that they are made off of. We all see it on TV. We see it on the internet. So, do, so that's same, the same people that you see on TV, they are here now in person, flesh and bones. So be ready to draw. And anytime they come like this, one of the things that I demand in my spirit is that whatever grace they carry must also drop on this altar. It was from you, AJ, I heard for the first time, the coat of many colors. That look, the, 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 the end time is such that you need... You, you know, that's why God, the original, you see the Egypt guys are stolen our, our logo. You know, they, we've allowed and we allow them to go away. We should, not, we should get that thing back. The rainbow belongs to us. The rainbow is what you see around the throne. If you go to heaven, you see the rainbow around the throne like this. Different dimensions of glory. And God has put some in Pastor Ayo, he has put some in Pastor Bology, he has put some in everyone that will speak tonight. And as you begin to draw red here, you draw purple here, you draw it there, you combine it together, then you now have pure light. Your light, begin, your light begin to shine as the light of the world when you draw graces. So when you, when you have the opportunity like this to be under their teachings, you need, you need to deliberately draw. Because there are certain things that there are certain things that we answer when some people speak. Because in the spirit realm, there's rank. There's rank. And I recognize that. And I know that. And we have one of yeah, it's one of the youngest voices, but it's a very senior person in the spirit. Very senior. Very, very senior. You know, so I'll do the introduction much more later. So please draw all you can. And like I always say, and I like to say it while the pastors are here, we can, you can change the direction of the message. You can pull the pastor in your direction and he will not leave until he speaks to you. In case you came, even you have a sickness in your body and we have been praying, 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 praying and the sickness did not go. Maybe this is the moment that that thing has been waiting for and it will shift. So you place a demand on the anointing. Place a demand on the grace that will flow in this place. And, and this is what I want you to carry at the back of your mind. That as they start to preach, over them is Jesus. With a bowl in his hand. Baptizing you with grace. Baptizing you with wisdom. And much more, baptizing you with fire. Because this whole place is like a waterfall, but with fire. So just imagine yourself under a waterfall, 
But instead of water falling from the waterfall, it's pure fire that is falling from that waterfall. But this fire is the type of fire that was burning on Moses' bush that did not consume him, but purified him. So that's fire that will cleanse your spirit, soul, and body. So even if the sickness that you carry in your, in, your, in your physical body, that fire will burn every sickness there. If there's anything in your soul, as you stand under this waterfall that is the firefall, it will burn up every addiction inside your soul. As you stand under this waterfall, God on this firefall, God will clothe your spirit with fire. You will clothe your spirit with grace. You will clothe your spirit with strength. You will even begin to move in realms that even you, you didn't know you could move in. That is the whole idea of this conference. So we call this conference for graces to be poured, for fire to fall on you, and for your life to begin to take a different trajectory in, in, in line with what God has called you to do on the face of the earth. That is just a summary of what we are here to do these seven days. And I have no doubt in my heart that beginning from this night, God will begin to tick your boxes. You begin to adjust the issues of your life. And there will be tangible miracles that you use to testify to and make this day a landmark day in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. So we're going to have two word sessions tonight. Two word sessions. And the first will be by my friend and my brother in the faith. Um, I, I told him, I told him that, so it's not because you live in Abuja. Not because he lives in Abuja. And it's also, maybe also because he lives in Abuja. I'm happy he's in Abuja. Because when he told me he was moving to Abuja, I said, correct. Finally, I have a kindred spirit. I have a friend in the city. So, he's the, so every time we are doing this conference, the first one we did last year, so the first time I was supposed to do this conference was in 2000 and, 2021 or so. I'd written the names of the guests that I was going to have come. His name was on the list. When, I was going to, when we did the final, the final did the first conference last year, the first name to write was, the name, was his name on the list. Then, and I told him last year that he was going to come and speak again this year. And while we're finalizing for this year, I have told him again that he's going to come and speak next year. <laughs> so until he tell me he cannot come, we'll be inviting him. So, and he's even speaking three times this year. You know, he, he was supposed to have their own conference this weekend. I said, I don't care. <laughs> was starting, I think he was supposed to start on Friday. I said, you still speak for me till Thursday. On Friday, you go and start your own conference. And I'm not going to come. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. So it's good to have people you can just hold like that. And, and, and we're so honored and blessed to have him. And he's here with his beautiful wife. Amen. So let's stand on our feet tonight, Holy Hill Church, as we receive my friend and brother, Pastor Ayo Ajani, the senior pastor. Petra Christian Center, Abuja, Accra, Port Harcourt, Lagos. Wow. what I'm saying. <laughs> when you come to church, you're, I mean, you should have a smile all this way. This is beautiful. And I think you should celebrate your pastor. And <laughs> pastor Sunday for visionary leadership for being who he is. We love you and we honor you. Thank you, sir. Pastor Chako, my friend, thank you so much. Um, I have the honor of speaking and Pastor Bolaji seated, uh, standing seated here. <laughs> I always say this, the very first person um, who did not know me from home, who met me outside, um, you know, um, where I grew up and all the rest, who gave me a chance in ministry and believed in me was Pastor Bolaji Do. And, uh, <laughs> and, um, till eternity, I would always be grateful for 
who he is and for her everything. Thank you, sir. Love you, sir. Love you. Hallelujah. And my beautiful wife. Oh, yes. And oh, oh yes. Okay. So I should say that. He gave me a wife. <laughs> All right. Pastor <laughs> B is out now, right? Good. <laughs> Praise God. I should bring that real, right? Must <laughs> be your pastor level. <laughs> Praise God. And my beautiful wife is here as well. Let's please appreciate Pastor Diora. Praise God. And it's good to meet Minister Oweabutu. My wife has been playing your songs just the last two days, sincerely speaking. And so it's just a joy. Let's lift our hands towards heaven and bless the name of the Lord. This is the opening session of this conference. And the glory of the Lord is already in the house. The presence of God's spirit is here. So mighty, so strong. Let's give him praise and let's thank him. Lift your hands and just bless the name of the lord adore him worship him from the depth of your heart father we give you praise and we thank you we worship you thank you for one year one year gone by we were here last year and we're here again thank you for your faithfulness thank you for the counsel and the mind of the spirit concerning this conference concerning our lives and concerning this church lord we give you praise we bless you we adore you in the name of the lord jesus we have prayed Amen. father we bless you thank you for utterance thank you for grace and thank you for a mighty supply of your spirit in the name of jesus we have prayed amen, amen. please let's be seated quickly <clears throat> i have the honor of bringing the first word in this conference and it's both a honor and a huge responsibility so I had to just wait on the Lord a bit more just to um, be clear in my heart what direction he'll have us go. Um, when you have a man of God like this seated, you just quickly do what you have to do and allow. I'm John the Baptist, okay? Jesus Christ is coming, all right? <laughs> Praise God, all right. Um, Acts chapter 3. <clears throat> Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. I'm just going to share um, quickly with us just to open the conference. And like Pastor Sunday said, um, I still have a couple of sessions. So what I'm going to do tonight is just to get us started. As I prayed, one of the things the Lord reminded me of was a story I read of Kenneth He Egan, um, written by one of his students that graduated from Rema Bible Training Center. This was the under Kenneth Hagin himself and this was um, I think 1987 or 1988 when brother Hagin himself would teach the classes would teach the meetings and all the rest and um, the person told the story of how that brother Hagin will come into the class will teach the um, classes um, evening classes and all the rest and many times there was this buzzer that would go off just to alert um, whichever lecturer was there that it's time for you to leave and all the rest and so the buzzer will go off and Brother Hagin, in characteristic style, will close his notes and go, well, we're done for tonight. I'll see you later. He said, however, there were about 11, 12 of them who would wait behind after the class. And usually they were just there praying in the spirit, just pressing in for a bit more, um, because they just thought that there was a bit more. And he said, almost without fail, not everything, but almost without He said, Brother Hagin will get to the car park and he's I mean whether trying to enter his car whatever it is and would we'll turn back into the class by this time the whole class has dispersed and all you have is just these 11 students left and brother Hagen will walk into the place and then he will begin to speak words of prophecy over their lives he walked to them one by one and begin to prophesy to them now the man was a prophet all right so he'll begin to prophesy to them and this will last minutes sometimes into hours and these other students were gone. Then he wrote this. He said, um, years after, they were comparing notes. And they found out that every single thing Kenneth Hagin said to them, those 11, 12 of them, had become the reality of their lives. That there was something unique and distinct about these 11 outside. I mean, there were several of them in the class. But there was something unique and distinct about these 11 that just made them different. 
you know, and when the Lord brought that back to my heart, he said something, and, and the, the guy, the, the pastor was writing, he said, it's important to discern the highest office in which a man stands, which means um, many times you have ministers who stand in a plethora of offices, but it's important as a, as a believer to discern what the highest office is that the man is standing in so that you can draw virtue from that grace at that level. So a lot of people received Hagen, um, those students, as a wonderful teacher of the word, and they received doctrine, and they went back and taught their churches and all the rest. But then some people received him at a higher level, knowing that there was something more that this man carried. Are you following what I'm saying here? And I'm saying that to say this, that there's a way and manner in which you posit yourself, in which you, um, um, you position yourself um, to receive beyond what is just happening in a meeting. The Bible tells us, was being baptized in the same waters in which every other person was being baptized. And the Bible, the only thing the Bible adds, it says, Jesus Christ died and praying, then the heavens were opened. So he tells you why the heavens were opened. He didn't say Jesus being baptized and because he was the son of God, the heavens were opened. He says, Jesus being baptized and praying, and then the heavens were opened. So there's something about a posture of prayer where you're seated there, you're listening, but there's a posture of prayer. And I always say to people, uh, and Pastor Sunday, I believe this with all of my heart, that this conference will be a very defining conference for this church and for every single person who is a part of this conference. And I'm saying that because of what the Lord said to me in prayer. I'm saying that because of what the Lord showed me in prayer. Um, there's a, I always would say this, that um, our lives are changed, altered in moments not over time. Read through scripture. Nobody's life changed over time. People's lives were radically altered in moments. And I've heard from heaven that this conference will be somebody's moment. Amen. And I say that to you with all sense of integrity, understanding that I'm standing before God's people on the altar of God. My wife is here. I've spent time before the Lord concerning this meeting tonight, and I've heard from God that that moment that you would refer to years to come, that moment where everything just literally turned around. Don't forget, Jesus had been doing everything, just like every other person. I mean, he, he went to the synagogue. He was um, arguing with the doctors of the law everything normal, um, doing everything that was expected of a Jew at that time, but there was a moment, and the moment he entered into that space, literally the same person, and this is how it works, the man on this side is not the man on this side. Uh, you get what I'm saying here? It's almost as though you can't, you can't uh, say for history, the benefit of history, Say for the benefit of history, you almost cannot say this is the person that was on this. That's why they said, is this not the carpenter's son? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't make sense. Is this not the carpenter's son? And let me say something to you. When you enter moments like this, there will be those kind of conversations. Don't get upset. Don't get offended in people because uh, say that they followed you and entered it, it would, it would, their minds just cannot understand I mean, because they know your history too much for them to understand what has happened in a moment. Hallelujah. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes. So I'm saying to someone here that literally you will have people saying things like, is, is that not um, Deji? What kind, what, what's, what's wrong with him? Is, that, is, do, is he saying that we don't know him anymore? Why will he be talking like that? But you have entered into something in your life. Are you following what I'm saying? Remember, I said to us, I said tonight, I just want to lay foundations. Um, I still have a couple of sessions. Look at Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Acts the third chapter and the 19th verse. All right. He says, repent ye therefore and be converted. So you see that he's drawing, um, as you would call it, a line. It's um, the, the believer's trajectory. All right. The believer's trajectory always starts from repentance. All right. Believing in 
the message of the gospel, accepting the Lord Jesus into your heart and the life that he has brought to us. So he starts from there and he says, repent ye therefore and be saved, be converted. He says that your sins may be blotted out. To give us context, this is um, Peter right after Pentecost. Acts chapter 2 was Pentecost. Acts chapter 3 was the lame man being healed and all the rest. I mean, who had been placed at the temple all that while. And he says, um, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Let me backtrack a bit just to understand what moments are. I was in prayer many years back, and um, I mean, you know, the Lord said to me uh, at that time, he, he was saying to me, oh, it's time to start a church and all the rest. And sincerely, from the depth of my heart, I did not want to plant a church. I didn't, I mean, there are people I see nowadays who really love the Lord, and you know, they want to. Do you get what I'm saying? I was not that born again. I didn't want to. And so, I mean, I always tell people, God deceived me into ministry, literally, as it were. <laughs> I won't go into the story. But I remember I began to give my excuses to the Lord, like, Lord, you know, ah, I mean, and this, I am being sincere. This is what I said. I said, what do I want to say that Idahosa has not said? What do I want to do that Oyakilome has not done? And these were the names, the gospel, and sincerely speaking, if you lived at that time, you'd understand what I'm saying. Because, I mean, I'm like, what else? What revelation do I want to preach that anybody will think is worth listening to? That's what I said to the Lord. And then the Lord pointed me to Acts chapter 3. I'll never forget it. The Bible says that the layman had been placed at the gates. You remember that? And you know that he, that was not the first time he was placed there. Um, from birth, from his mother's womb, he was lame. He had been placed there all the while. This was the same temple that Jesus went to. And I'm sure that every time Jesus went to that temple, the man asked for alms, and Jesus said, Judas, give him some money. Uh, you get what I'm saying here? Which meant for the three and a half years ministry of Jesus Christ. And we know at least he must have gone there maybe once a week or once every two weeks. Jesus encountered this man, but the man was not healed. Uh, you get what I'm saying here? And the Lord said this to me. He said, have you ever thought about it that the greater miracle was not that the lame man was healed, was that Peter thought he had something enough to heal someone that Jesus did not heal? And I will never forget what the Lord said to me. He said, the music is not over till your voice is heard. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Here? He said, the music is not over till your voice is heard. Hear this. The way God has designed it is this. We all have a part and nobody has a more glorious destiny than the other. Are you following what I'm saying? Here? And it's in moments like this that this, what I call it, is the prophetic destiny of a person and the prophetic destiny of a people. It's in moments like this that it's crystallized. I mean, literally just overnight, something just comes alive on the inside of you in moments like this. Now, so let's go back to this. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Look at what it says. He says, now you are saved, you're born again. Then he says, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. We're going to read this to about verse 21. And I want you to just keep the flow of thoughts in your mind. Look at verse 20. He says, he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. Verse 21. Now let's read together. I want you to go. Whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things. Now, do you see two times there? There is the times of refreshing in Acts 3.19. And then the times of restitution in Acts chapter 3 verse 21 and literally as it were he draws a line almost like a trajectory of the believer's journey a trajectory of the believer's life it says when you get saved your sins are blotted out you receive Jesus into your heart he says that there are times of refreshing that God has designed to be a part of your Christian experience and this will last until the times of restitution of all things. Are you following what I'm saying here? Now, to understand this, we have to study it on two levels. First, as a spiritual cell, a church, for example, like this. And then secondly, as an individual believer by yourself. Let's look at it when it says the times of, because those two words are very different and they are critical experiences in the life of every believer. It talks about the times of refreshing and then it says the times of restitution. The word times there, when it says times of refreshing, he uses the word kairos. When it says times of restitution, the other word time there, he uses chronos. They are not the same thing. Now, we're Bible students. We know that kairos refers to opportune time, a, a special moment. Kairos is not time that continues. 
It's a window of opportunity, a special moment. That's why we call it a Kairos moment, an opportune time in which something happens and then it defines the rest of the Kronos. Are you getting what I'm saying here? In essence, the moment this thing happens at this time, it then defines the quality, the value, the character of what we call chronos. Chronos being successive time. So you say that's where you get chronometer from, all right? You get chronology from, which means um, day after day, year after year, month after month. Are you following what's going on here? All right, so he says that we have what we call kairos of refreshings, um, that God prophetically has instituted into our journey. Interestingly, that word refreshing there is revivals. Another, and that's the only time it's used in the New Testament. Interestingly, that's the only one time it's used. Times of revivals, times of reviving, times of awakening. Are you getting what I'm saying here? And it says those chronos, those, um, pardon me, kairos, opportune times, then defines the chronos of your life. The other word there is times of restitution. And it's important you know this. That word restitution means to restore back to original intent. Are you following what I'm saying here? It means to realign with original purpose and original intent. Now, let's bring this thought to our lives as individuals. Now, you know, if you drive a car for long, particularly in Nigeria, and I, I mean, anywhere in the world, but particularly in Nigeria, you have this experience early enough. At some point, you know, you have to do wheel alignments and balancing, right? Particularly in Nigeria. Because if you don't do it, you find out that your car will develop a mind of its own and drive you. Are you getting what I'm saying here? You know why that has happened? Because you have used the car over time to do what it should do. It has experienced wear and tears. Are you following what I'm saying here? So what do you do? You take that car back to a manufacturer or a mechanic or something like that, and then they align the wheels back. Are you following what I'm saying here? That aligning of the wheels is what we call a kairos of refreshing. Then you bring that car back to the road. Character of the car for the next three years. After three years again, you have to take that car back for a short moment. The kairos of refreshing is usually short. It's usually brief. Are you getting what I'm saying here? But it defines what happens for the rest of the time, the chronos that you have. If somebody listens to what I'm saying here. I'm building up to somewhere with this. In essence, all you have to do for things to go out of way is not to disobey God. It's actually just to even be obeying God. Are you following what I'm saying here? Do you know that obeying God will drain virtue out of you? If, if you do what God has called you to do, I hope you know that it will put a strain on your faith if you are doing what God has called you to do. If you are doing what God has called so I'm not even saying that you're out of line. I'm saying that just by you obeying the Lord and following the Lord, doing the things that the Lord expects of you to do, it's just a matter of time. There's what is called wear and tear. The same way you have it in natural, you have it in the spirit. And then beyond, I mean, that's considering that all the factors are perfect. But we don't live in a perfect world. Before you came here, somebody said something to you. You read something. Are you following what I'm saying here? Somebody would have um, um, acted in a certain way through you all of these things build up into your soul they build up into your spirit and without you knowing it have you found yourself reacting away before and say where did that come from where did that come from you just could not imagine if you sat back and said no 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 have you found yourself maybe one day you're just in the car and then you start singing a song you say eh? MD, hey how can MD sing this kind of song you, I mean, not that you premeditated singing the song. Are you following what I'm saying? Just because you are in this world, are you getting this? You are in this environment. You open your WhatsApp, you will see something you don't want to see. Except you want to be a hermit. You're going to hear something you don't want to hear. There's news on this side. There's that one happening and all dressed. And all of that is compounding in such a way that it brings a strain on your life. It reflects in different ways. Sometimes the clarity of the voice of God is far from you. It's almost difficult for you to discern what the Lord is saying. Sometimes you can tell that, listen, everything, the wheels are rolling, but I have lost this joy and the excitement that I used to have. Are you getting what I'm saying here? Sometimes everybody 
God is praising you, but you know on the inside of yourself, this is not the way to go. But you can't even find what way to go again. You are here, you lift your hands and you pray, Paraba, you do all of the calisthenics and all the acrobatics of, uh, of church and all the rest, but you live sometimes empty on the inside of yourself. Is somebody getting what I'm saying here? In essence, whether you like it or not, life places a demand on you. So God says to us, he says that there are two moments in our lives. There are times of re refreshing, which are moments, and then there are chronoses of restoration, which means everything is aligned back to perfect order. Uh, if, there's, if there's a growth in your body, I hope you know that a growth in your body is not perfect order. Is somebody getting what I'm saying here? They say you have ulcers. We checked your intestine. There are ulcers and all the rest. I hope you know that that is not perfect order. In essence, what happens at that time when we, call, when we talk about restoration is the fact that there's an alignment of your soul, your being, and brings it to a place of perfect order. And let me tell somebody here, you can stand before God and before men and say that this is where I should be. I'm in the center of everything God wants me to be. You know, many times we think that, oh, it's not possible and all this. Listen, it is absolutely possible to know that where I am right now is where God wants me to be. In the integrity of my heart, my conscience clear before the Lord, nothing missing, nothing broken within the mercy of God. Are you following what I'm saying here? But then he tells you, observe that the times of um, um, rest restorations are dependent on the times of refreshing that comes from the presence of the Lord. He says, you're going to have those moments in your life where something will happen. And I think that it's critical for us here at this conference to start this way, to know that this is a kairos of refreshing, where God will encounter you and bring you right smack, aligning you perfectly with his plans and his purposes for your life. Are you following what I'm saying here? There's a scripture. The Bible says that when Jesus was baptized in the Jordan, the Holy Spirit came upon him. Go and read it. The Bible says, and he began to be 30 years of age. He didn't say he was 30 when he was baptized. He says, and Jesus began to be 30 years of age. 30 being the year of maturity. The year in which you step into the fullness of the inheritance that the, the Jewish father has for you. Are you following what I'm saying here? I mean, there's nothing wrong if they had said that he was 30 years of age. But he says, and he began to be, so he connects what happened in that Jordan with him stepping into the fullness of God's plan for his life. And that fullness of plan was just three years, three and a half years, and he was done with it. In essence, he had lived 30 years, and that was not exactly what, why he came into the earth. Look at it. Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age. Hallelujah. Is somebody still here tonight? Yes, so I believe with all of my heart that what God is doing tonight in this conference is that he's creating those moments of opportunity and you step into the fullness of what God has for you. Hallelujah. hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. Now the question is how, how do these things happen? Are they left within the sovereignty of God? This is what I found out. I found out that you know, when people say God is sovereign and he does what he wants to do the way he wants to do it, I'll tell you how God acts out his sovereignty. God acts out his sovereignty by moving on the will of men. That's what he does. John Wesley said something very powerful. He said, it will seem to me that God does nothing except in answer to the prayers of men. I, I mean, and I believe that he was just being humble. He had studied how everything went, and he said, it would seem to me that God does nothing except in answer to the prayers of men. And this is what I found out, that in the sovereignty of God, when certain things need to be accomplished in the earth, God does not just move into the earth and act. Are you following what I'm saying here? In his sovereignty, he begins to act on the will of men. Let me explain the way God showed this to me. Now, some of us here are landlords, some of us are tenants. Um, uh, uh, now, whether you're landlord or tenant, you understand this perfectly. If you go rent a house, is it rent? Oh, rent, right. You rent a house, okay. And pardon me. And then you, you sign the contract um, for the house and all the rest. And you pay whatever amount. They say it's 100,000 naira or whatever it is that you pay for the house. You pay for the house. The moment you pay for that house and you sign that contract, 
I hope you know that that house, I mean, as a tenant, that house never stops being the house of your landlord. Still belongs to your landlord. Are you following what I'm saying? Here? I mean, there's, you, you, don't, you don't have ownership of the house, even though you are the one in possession of it at that moment. Uh, you get what I'm saying here? However, here's the point. I hope you know that at, from that moment, it becomes illegal of the landlord to just step into the house and just open the door and sit down in the living room. I hope you know the house is still his house. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. The house is still, you cannot claim that the house is not his house. The house is still the landlord's house. But the moment he leased it to you, he lost in court the right to just step in to the affairs of that house without your permission, which means you will now have to invite him over to be able to sit down in your living room, even though it is his house. In the same way, the heavens of heaven belongs unto God, but the earth has he given to the sons of men. And that explains why prayer is that permission that the landlord needs to execute his counsel in the earth, even though it's his head. Is hey, somebody getting what I'm saying here? In essence, don't forget this. The sovereignty of God will always play out through the will of men. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Yes, go and study it. And I like where Pastor Sunday started from. Go and study it. I mean, was it the counsel of God that the promise of the Holy Spirit should be given into the earth? It was. From the beginning of the foundation of the world, this was already, are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, was it the counsel of God that Jesus should be born into the earth? It was. Let's even start with that. It was the counsel of God that Jesus should be born into the earth. There were prophecies hanging about Two persons. The Bible tells us of Simon and then Anna the prophetess. And both of them, what the Bible tells us about them is the fact that they took on the prophecies of scripture. And they prayed those prophecies. And it came to a point where Simon, go and read it. Simon did not know they were doing dedication for Jesus. The Bible actually says what really happened was that he was moved by the spirit. He just, and that's really what happens. Are you getting what I'm saying here? I mean, he was moved by the Spirit. He just walked into the tabernacle. The moment he saw the child, he said, this is the fulfillment of what we have been praying about. So he lifted up the child. Observe the conversation of Simon. He lifted up the child. He said, Lord, behold the deliverance of Israel. Sure. Behold, and he made all those prophetic statements. Then he said something. He said, now your servant can depart in peace. In essence, somebody was held alive till Jesus was born. If the prophecy of the fulfillment of, Je of um, the fulfillment of the prophecy of the birth of Jesus was predicated on the prayers of men, you have to understand that there is nothing that will happen just by sovereign action in your life. What God will first do is that he will cause your will to begin to desire something. This is where people now miss it. Because we don't understand the motions of the spirit. Somebody says, I just don't know, I'm feeling sad. Then you start going for therapy. <laughs> Am I against it? I train as a doctor. I'm not against it. I understand the place that he has. But you just, I, I, I don't know, I'm just feeling, I'm just feeling, I just don't understand how I'm feeling nowadays and all this, all this. You have to understand that the Holy Ghost has emotions and he must find a body in the earth to express it through. Mm. Is somebody listening to what I'm saying? Yes, That's why Paul said in Colossians, the first chapter, he says that we... of Christ. That was a very dangerous statement to make. Are you saying that the sufferings of Christ were incomplete? Are you saying that when Jesus died on the cross, what he did on the cross was not perfect? Are you not the same person who told us of the perfection of the, of, of the cross, the things that Jesus has purchased for us on the cross? Are you saying you can add something to it? Absolutely not. You know what he was saying? He was saying those things that Christ has wrought on the cross, there has to be a body to birth it in the earth. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes, Please listen very carefully to this. So what God begins to do is that he begins to move upon your heart. 
So you find yourself in a place where you say, I don't understand why I'm feeling this way. I don't understand why I'm feeling that way. You know why? The only way anything is permitted to enter the earth is through the womb of prayer. Never forget what I said. The only way anything is permitted to enter into the earth is through the wombs of prayer. I was praying and then the Lord said this to me. He said, son, and I was sharing this with a couple of our people. I said, he said to me, he said, what the word is, what food is to your body is what the word is to your spirit. Now, but I hope you know that the only way and manner in which your body can actually um, take advantage of the food you are eating is the fact that it's a life. There's vitality in that body. In essence, food is not a means to an end. Are you get what I'm saying here? It's not the end by itself. There has to be vitality in that body. You have to be alive because if you put food in the, if you put balanced diet in the mouth of a dead man, it has no effect. You know why? Not because the food is not balanced or ineffective, but because he does not have the capacity to take advantage of what the food brings. The Lord said to me, he said, the word is food to your spirit in the same way you have food to your body. He said, but prayer is bread to your spirit. Are you following what I'm saying here? Yes, That's why he says, men ought always to faint to pray and not to faint. He connects vitality in your life to prayer. Yes, Are you following what I'm saying? Here? He connects vitality in your life to prayer. So what God begins to do is that he begins to move upon your soul. He begins to move upon your heart. You just find yourself um, sometimes, and I'll give you certain scenarios, you find sometimes you just don't even understand what is going on. Why am I feeling this way I'm feeling? Everybody is praising you on the external, but there's like an emptiness on the inside. And you have learned well to distinguish between ingratitude and this um, dissatisfaction that the Holy Ghost himself creates on the inside of yourself. Are you get what I'm saying? There's a difference. Let me tell you the difference. In gratitude points the picture back to yourself. It is always to yourself in comparison to others. Are you get what I'm saying here? But dissatisfaction as created by the Holy Spirit has nothing to do with what is going on, on, the ins on the, around you. It is something that is happening on the inside of yourself. And many a time, somebody is saying to you that, Kai, can you minister away? Man. About it, there's something inside you that says, listen, this is not what I'm looking for. This is not what I'm looking for. Let me tell you something. When we do not heed these nudgings of the spirit, it is a matter of time. We miss out on a season that God meant to open up in our lives. Let me tell you something and never forget it. You can never plan a season. You prepare for it. In essence, you can't calculate and say, I'm going, you know, by the time I'm 35. No, you can never plan a season. You simply walk in sync with the Holy Spirit. Are you following what I'm saying here? And then as he places the demands upon you, and usually that demand is a demand of fasting and prayers. Is somebody listen to what I'm saying here? Let me tell you something. The pro God said this to me, and I've thought about it deeply. There's no generation under heaven since Jesus died that has the abundance of word that this generation has. Even Jesus' generation did not have. What? Just open WhatsApp, snippet upon snippet upon snippet. Boys are busting everywhere. Are you getting what? Boys, men, teenage, everybody busting. And you, you take one scripture, this one has this direction, that one has that direction, and, and everybody's right. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, Every, you open YouTube, do you realize that messages are more popular now than secular songs? Yes. Do you know that there were years ago when you opened YouTube, what you saw was the video? When last did you see it? Except on advert. What is, what, <laughs> what comes to you naturally? Is what? Is what? You just open any social platform, what comes to you? Let me tell you something. For the abundance of what that this generation has, this is not where we should be. No, sir. This is not, thank you, sir. This is not where we should be. 
For the abundance of word that people are declaring and I mean, and people know and people have, this is not where we should be. I can tell you something that what is missing there is called tarryings in prayer. Yes, yes, yes. Hear this. It is easier for you to listen. Easier. And anybody that is smart in this generation will see what God is doing. He has amplified the place of prayer. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes. So number one, you find out that you begin to have these emotions that you may not be able to explain. You really can't, what is it exactly? Why am I feeling this way that I'm feeling and all the rest? Then you begin to have, I mean, it could even look like a depressive thought and all the rest. And then you have this um, dissatisfaction on the inside of yourself that even though everybody celebrates, everything is rosy and everything is fine on the external. Are you getting what I'm saying here? Everything is fine, everything is rosy on the external, but you begin to find out that your heart is desiring more. Let me tell you a third one, which is very powerful. The very place that was a blessing to you begins to curse you. In essence, Pharaoh's house, that was your safe haven, will soon ask to kill you. The very thing you shared as testimony yesterday. Have you been in a place where you came to church and you shared testimony how you got that job miraculously? You came to church. You shared it. It was as awakening was going on, you received the word. And you got your awakening job. By the next awakening, they want their, everybody has ganged up against you in that place. The very thing that you gave testimony about. And sometimes people, people are wondering what is going on, what a new season is opening to you. And I tell you something you should never forget. Our life in the spirit is not linear. It's cyclical. Go and read from Genesis chapter 1. He says the night and the day. And he created times and seasons. Are you getting what I'm saying here? You have to understand that God operates in times and in seasons. Let's put it this way. You, you, you see, <laughs> you, you, you have to understand that if you miss, and this is what I've learned. God said this to me. He said, seasons are non-forgiving. Seasons are non-forgiving. Very non-forgiving. That's why there must be that consciousness inside your heart. And remember where I started from. I said as a spiritual cell as an, as, an, as an individual, when God calls an assembly like this, it's because a new season is opening to that church. This is, you, you know, sometimes believers don't get it. They think pastors just want to have conference. I am a pastor. The last thing you want to do is have conference. Pastor, they're married. Do you know this? Pastor Blaji was just telling me about a conference. Do you know what it takes to organize conference? The last thing you want to do under heaven, let me just be preaching. Conference? You know, people think that we, you just want to put billboard. You just want to invite min, guest ministers. Do you, know the, do you know the administration to organize seven days program? I've never done it. I don't think I will. God is not leading me in that direction. <laughs> it's not a season that is coming. Seven days program. You know, as you were saying, I said seven nights. Ah. Okay. I mean, seven days, you know what it is? You have ministers back to back, back to back. Can I tell you something? A new season is opening. Yeah. A new season is opening. Yeah. Is somebody listening to what I'm saying here? Yeah. How do we take advantage of what the Lord is doing? Respond to the promptings of the Spirit in prayer. That's the number one way to take advantage of what the Spirit of the Lord is doing. Respond to the promptings of the Spirit in prayer. Let me tell you this story. The Bible says that the Holy Ghost came upon Jesus at the baptism in Jordan. You remember, right? And the Bible says that he was full of the Holy Spirit. But what did the Holy Spirit do? He led him into the wilderness to do what? To spend 40 days and 40 nights in prayer by himself. By the time he returned, what did the Bible say? It says that he was full of what? The power of the Spirit. There is the need to shut the door behind yourself. And it's in that place you process. Abroad. Not one miracle yet, not one, not one message yet. And his fame spread abroad. Are you getting what I'm saying here? Let me tell you this, believers, let's never forget it. Our strength is our secret place. That is our strength. As a church, as a corporate body, as individuals, our strength is our secret place. That's where things really begin to happen. And my first assignment tonight is to prepare us for what the Lord will do at this conference. I want you to set your face before the Lord, and we're going to pray in the Spirit.
for the next five minutes. Everybody begin to pray in the spirit, wherever you are. Wherever you are, begin to pray in the spirit. Begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. Begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. Go ahead, close your eyes and just begin to pray. All right, just a second, just a second. The, the Lord would have me explain something just a bit more so that we pray well. Um, th there was a time, this was maybe three or four years ago, I was in prayer like this and then the Lord began to show me the difference between um, the growth you can experience as a believer in your life and moments of encounters where everything changes. Pastor Sunday, Paul, Saul, light shone from heaven in one moment. The moment he stood up, you know what he called Jesus? Lord, what would you have me do? That's the first thing that came out of his mouth. Just an encounter. In fact, Acts chapter 9, verse 9 down to verse 11. Go and read it. The Bible says that he was there three days, three nights without sight, praying and fasting. He had not gone to Sunday school. But something happened there. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Here? Something happened to Jacob overnight, literally. The entire trajectory of his life changed. And God said this to me. He said there is growth in your life where you are growing, spiritual growth. And includes, I mean, things happening all around you. There's growth happening around you. But growth is not the way to end. It's true encounters where in a moment something, something is triggered. Whether it's, I mean, whatever. But you, something happens within your life. And that becomes a defining point for the rest of your life. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes. And you know the example God gave me? You remember the egg, the pupa, the lava, the imago, I may have mixed it up, then to the butterfly, you know, right? You know that when you're moving from egg to lava, you know that that is growth. But when it moves from this one to this one, there has to be what metamorphosis. In fact, when you look at that worm, eh, there's no correlation between it and the beautiful butterfly that you see thereafter. First is that it develops capacities that were previously non-existent. You know why, Pastor Sunday? There is a level of life God expects it to live. At this level, it does not have the capacity for it. So it has to develop wings to be able to do the things God wants it to do. Is somebody getting what I'm saying here? In essence, there are things waiting you on the other side, but there has to be an encounter. It's called... separates itself from the world around it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, this thing does not happen, you know, you can be here and spin a cocoon around yourself. Which means the preachers are speaking and then you are hearing something they are not hearing. Is it not what Saul said? He said, they heard thunder, but I heard a voice. Yeah. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, so you can be here and you spin a cocoon around it. I'll tell a story and then we pray. I heard Benny Hinn was going to be in Nigeria, and it was going to be Rever with Reverend Kishia Kilome. This was the first time. I went in for that meeting, Pastor Sunday. I remember exactly where I was seated. A pastor friend was seated beside me. And Pastor Benny was teaching, and he was teaching, and he was teaching. I don't know why I went this way tonight, but God just said, prepare them for what he has, for, what he has for you for this conference. I'm telling you, this is, these are the best days of your life. I'm telling you. And Pastor Benny was teaching. He had, you know Pastor Benny. He had taught for over an hour. At a point, Pastor Benny just, just veered off. He, he, and you know, the thing had no correlation with what he was preaching. He just shouted. He said, Peter did not walk on water. Where I was, I said, ah, ah. The Bible said he walked on, he walked on water. He said, Peter walked on the words of Jesus. He said, there's no way you can walk on water. Whether it is calm or it is stormy, you don't walk on water. So if you say that, it's because he looked at the wind and all dressed and all dressed. With the wind, whether there's wind, I fell down sobbing like a baby. For the next one hour towards till the end of the meeting, I didn't hear anything that happened. But that day I stood up and the fear of attempting anything great died. 
My wife is standing here. You can ask her. There is nothing under heaven that I will hear God about that I have ever said, Lord, should I, should I not? Once I'm certain about it, I don't care whatever it is. The fear of it died. That thing, I didn't confess myself into it. It was a moment. I can tell you moments like that. And if you know anyone who is worth anything in the kingdom of God, they have these moments. They are called altars. That's why it says the patriarchs, they built altars where they met with the Lord. Are you following what I'm saying here? This conference will be your moment. I believe that with all of my heart. Please lift your two hands towards heaven and begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. Begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's called the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. So there's an attitude to the prayer. 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 Go ahead and pray in the Holy Spirit. Go ahead and pray in the Holy Spirit. Go ahead and pray in the Holy Spirit. I want you to lift your expectation, your desire for something. Something has to shift, something has to change. God called this conference because of you. He's brought these great speakers here because of you. God has something for your life and everything is about to change. Everything is about to change. Everything is about to change. The lava is about to become a butterfly. You're about to take wings and fly. I want you praying in the Holy Ghost wherever you are. Praying in the Spirit wherever you are. Praying in the Holy Spirit wherever you are. Shat in the man ko pradi gala an stora dishte. Shora ba tele man ko ba shalaman de gegalo tombera dish. Shat tele man ko beli gasan tele bonte. Send the pradi gom tombra giton skera anto stela bante. Poradiga, poradiga, poradiga. Bon stora diga ba shalamante. Embrons klekitos. Borodon shalamante. Shalabanto fronts la kitos, oratika bastera anto bregadish la ante, soramante. Tonight is your night of metamorphosis. This conference, there's gonna be a metamorphosis. A new man is arising. A new man is arising. Do you believe that with all of your heart? Pray in the Holy Spirit wherever you are. A new man is arising. A new man is arising. A new man is arising. Shora daga batela manto fros ne kitel antos. Hora daga shane manto from the geligos. Hora diga shane bonte. Shela manko brak de isla anko brak teila mani. A new man is rising. A new man is rising. Shera manto fros ne kito radiga. Ento bolo konstoro dosha. Peros koradiga, shalaman tobro dobon tobro dobon telebos, boradiga barados, era tela man kobro dos, ela man to fronts likita lahakti. Yes, a new man is rising. Shora talamante frade galakti, soro man tobro godiga barados, shalabate labate labate labate. Sheramonte <laughs> Sheramanta Bradiga Baradiga Baradosh Shabadabot Shabadabadota Shabadabadabota Sheramont of Rodabadabot Robalabadabadabados Shuradabot of Rodabosa Oh yes, get on the Bokito Labos Shabadabonte Vandabados Saradon Kabadish Dalabanto Kabayati Shayla Manto from the Boracota Baradis Ora Bataila Manto from Slabat Taila kanalo bodo boyati. Oh hallelujah! Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. Pastor Sunday, let me say this, um, and so the the people can be a witness to it as well. I was praying earlier on today, and the Lord said to me two things. Number one, I saw. Um, 
a field, you know, and, and where you have flowers, look like hibiscus flowers and all the rest. You had the colors and everything and all the rest. And I saw, you know how the wind blows and what they tell us in science, that it will carry the seed from one point to another and all the rest. The, Lord, the, the word of the Lord came to me. He said, the seed of this house will be blown by the wind of the Spirit. He said, there's a wind blowing from this conference. There's a wind blowing. And he says, without effort, without sweat, without strain, without struggle. He said, the wind of my spirit has taken the seed of the house and blown it to distant lands. For your sons and your daughters shall come from afar. And from countries afar, they shall come here, saith the Spirit of the Lord. The second thing I saw was I saw, you know how you have early morning criers and they have megaphones. Uh, they have megaphones, they have megaphones, they have megaphones. And then as I, I prayed on and on and on, I realized that it was the same megaphone. It didn't look as though the megaphone was changed, but the amplitude was, you couldn't compare the megaphone to the amplitude, the volume that was coming out of it. And the Lord says to say to you, sir, that he's amplified your voice in this season. He's amplified your voice in this season. And it won't take long, see the Spirit of the Lord. It won't take long, see the Spirit of the Lord. For it's not by might, it's not by power, but by my spirit, see the Lord. And yea, I would watch over my word to perform it, see the Lord. I would watch over my word to perform it, see the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah.
Yahweh, Yahweh. Come on the hill and sing Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. That's what we sing, Yahweh. Amen. You may be seated. What a way to start off tonight, Pastor. You know, we were driving from church yesterday, and my one of my assistants was telling me that you know that it's just one message that we have this year in this church, and everybody who has been coming has been saying the same thing. Say so same thing. Same message. And, and that part of the cocooning, you were speaking to me. So the roof of my, my office started leaking. And so I just knew it was a sign that I didn't have to be in the office. So, and it was, it's taking very long for them to fix it. And so I just saw it as a cue, as a sign from heaven that I needed to spend time alone and to be cocooned and, and, um, and you came to explain a lot of things tonight. So, so we'll talk more about that. Thank you very much for that very timely word. So um, now, so this is a very, this, this is something that 20, 20, 2001 is, um, how many years now? 22 years. 20, 20, it was 22 years ago that I first met Pastor Biology. 22 years ago. So... I was, I was, um, I was in this fellowship started by one of his good friends, um, Pastor Yemi David. Um, so Pastor Yemi invited him to come and speak to us in the fellowship. So I was his protocol officer. I was attached to protocol him. He was with us for like four or five days or so. So I followed him everywhere. Both in our fellowship and when he went to other fellowships. I remember one of those days, we were driving back to his hotel, so we went to Castle. Um, pastor Ega was the pastor then in Castle OU. And Pastor Bolaj and Pastor Castle were in uh, Udubulu. And there's by the way, one of my pastors who was in Pawan, in the first year, in, I'll do the introduction later, don't worry. Um, he was in first year with, when you were graduating from Udubulu. So he said, he always knew you then in that school as a man of prayer. So we're in surprise, so, and of course, so we went there, and, and you were asked to just greet them for like five minutes. And a lot of miracles just started happening in the place. Five minutes. So I started looking at this man. I was like, who is this? And, and I protocoled. And I think I had a very unique ministry, work in that ministry. Anytime they had any pastor come, they just asked me to protocol them. So I protocoled a lot of pastors while I was, um, at least for those first two years, before I became a leader in the fellowship. What... Pa one thing that stood him out, so there are two things that I learned from you those four days that I just observed you. Um, one was, it was a, it is a man of prayer. So, of course, he had this room in the hotel. He was staying in the hotel, the hotel on the, on the campus. Very nice, at least there's air conditioned. We didn't have AC in our rooms. So, so but there was a space where they were. So, there, so you, at least you want to sleep and enjoy the AC. But he'll be outside the room praying at the back of the hotel, pacing everywhere. Praying for hours in, at night. And I saw that. And that was how I learned to, because yes, I used to pray, but in church or when I go to a prayer meeting. But to not have personal time of praying by myself, I caught it from him. Just observing him that. Then, of course, a man of style. He took his time to select his cufflinks, his shirt, and. and <laughs> His perfume, his shoes, very, very deliberate and very stylish. You can't, you can't catch him uh, without, it's very fresh. <laughs> you know, so, so at least those things, I got those two things from here and I'm trying to catch up. Um, and then, and, and of course, I desired relationship with him. Desired it strongly. So it didn't work. 
Oh. So every time I saw him, I have to introduce myself again to him. He said, do you, you don't remember me? He said, no, I don't remember. Ah, you have to remember me. Oh. Because there are people in your generation that you, you, you know them, they must know you. You understand? All of you know Tinubu, but does Tinubu know you? So it's, it's not in them, it's not, it's not about knowing those people. It's, but them knowing you is the real thing. So it, this is not somebody that cannot afford not to know me. I've known you for 22 years. You must know me too. <laughs> so I was in South Africa, and I ran to him in the mall. I said, okay, finally, this is my opportunity. He didn't see know me. <laughs> you know, um, but of course he knew me, but he was just being um, very, very technical, you know, because not everybody you open into your space. It was later I, I came to understand, it's not that he didn't know me, but he just wanted to be sure that, is this a relationship worth exploring? And of course, the way God will have it. For the fact that he's sitting here and he knows me, so, I, so I, told him, I told him that, I, so when, when we eventually met, um, I told him, I said, this is one relationship that I've really desired, really desired it, and thank God that um, we started relating, and he's here, and this is not the, this is not the last time he's going to come. Mm-hmm. But I'm not, going to, I'm not going to be in a hurry to invite him back, but I've tactically told him he's going to come back. So we are honored to have one of God's finest. Um, and I, I want you to be attentive, very, very attentive. He's, he's blue flame. It's lately that I started shouting when he's praying, but it's blue flame that burns very hot and caught very, very deep. The mark of the apostles upon him, creative miracles follows his teachings. And if someone from, from just observing him, it, it succeeds without noise and without effort. You just know that this one, this is the hand of God. That is the grace I want you to draw tonight. So for the first time in Holy Hill Church, let's receive one of God's best, strongest voices, Pastor Bolaji Ido. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Wow. It's nice to be in Holy Hill, first of all. So let me tell you how I got to know the name of the church. We're trying to, we're, 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 we're having a church, an older expression of our church. Some of our church members are growing older. And we're like, okay, let's start a church for people that are older. And I don't know, I just said Holy Hill. So maybe because I'd seen it somewhere, but I didn't register. So maybe for Pastor Day I spoke to him. I went to Google and I saw Holy Hill. There's a church, Holy Hill. And it's a very lovely church. And um, so that's the first time. But for Pastor Sunday, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Pastor Sunday was being tactical. The, the truth is that in his time, it makes all things beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And what I was saying to him, I said, if you force a relationship, it will snap instead of connect. And in God's way, you know, by the time we connected, we didn't just even connect over a conversation. We went to mall, we went to, went to play games, we went to park, we were together because we met, because, because we, now met, we now met in UAE. So for like two or three days we would eat, we had dinner, all my, my kids were there, my wife, you know, Pastor Mrs. was there, we all just had a great time. And, and it was beautiful. And that was just God bringing us back. And, you know, we'll, we'll ch- and we've, been, we've been speaking for a while, but um, the opportunity to meet, um, was time to come last year? Was it this year? I went to, it was this year, you know. So I want you to come and not come. And this time, um, against all odds. I mean, this is, me being here is against all odds. <laughs> we have a conference in the UK, and, um, yeah. you know, yeah, and I should be there, but like, okay. My assistant said, no, you have to leave. I said that, you know what, I didn't have the faith to tell Pastor Sunday I want to cancel the meeting, you know. 
And um, I'm grateful because I really believe that it's, it's in the season of God to be here today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Amen. And uh, my darling Pastor Diola Ajani, Reverend Doctor. You, we always have to emphasize that. These are the only couple that the husband is a Reverend Doctor, the wife is a Reverend Doctor. All the other ones are just Reverend. <laughs> but they are Reverend Doctor, Reverend Doctor. Now, when they get Doctor in Divinity, it's going to be Reverend Doctor. What they call MSC, MSC then DD, then Double D. You know, it's going to be like that. You know, Pastor, it's, it's wonderful to see you. It's, um, you know, just beautiful. Just, just beautiful seeing you, seeing the growth, seeing how you used to ask all those small Bible questions. <laughs> You know, and seeing um, how Pastor Ayo was meant to be pastoring you, you know, yeah, be be because all I heard was that, um, you know, I joined this fellowship in school and it's very vibrant. The man is very anointed. He's teaching me the word of God. <laughs> then, they, but you will not blame her if you hear someone that teaches like you heard tonight. <laughs> Won't you say yes? <laughs> Amen. You know, and, and, and you know, and the lovely thing about Pastor Ayo is his devotion. You know, I don't know if you know him personally, but he, he has convictions, he has devotions. And when he teaches the word of God, he, he gives a lot of thought to it. As simple as that message was, it's a very, it's a lot of. Is doing. Then I have my age long friend here, you know, I just nicked him, Prophet Wale Akinlaja. You know, I've not seen him in, I've not seen him since he was 50 years old, you know, you know, and uh, since he moved to Abuja, literally, I've been, maybe, maybe in 10 years, I've seen him once or twice. So it's nice, he's the head of us coming and takes ourselves there at your meeting. Prophet, thank you for coming. Praise the Lord. Hey, hallelujah. Amen. I need more volume on the monitors. I need more volume on the monitors. I don't know if it's, um, I need more volume on the monitors. I know you, you are doing a great job. All right. So let's sing. Someone was trying to sing a song. Someone was singing earlier. Let's sing two or three songs. Then we will pray. Then I'll get into the word of God and we'll take off tonight. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 And I've seen uh, former Craig. Uh, yeah, I mean, she was a baby. Now she's a big woman now. You know, you know, <laughs> you know, wow. So I've seen, you know, people here and there, and it's just so nice. I've not, how long did I see you? Like, uh, five. five or six years ago. Oh, wow. Wow. Your brother, I still, I still see him in church. Yeah, I still see him in church. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. Beside me. <laughs> Thank you. 
thank you for what you've done so far. Thank you for the powerful first session. Thank you for transformation. We well, thank you because you are doing it again. You are doing it again. Our God that is full of wonders. We give you praise and glory. 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 In Jesus' mighty name. Can we take a moment and pray for anyone that has an, a sickness on the body? You know, let's do that before I start teaching so that I can just finish that. So there's someone here that has a sickness. As soon as I came, I felt it on my left-hand side. There's, a, there's something, there's a health condition you're dealing with. You're on my left-hand side. Then someone else, it's your ear on the, it's your ear. That's why I'm touching my ear. It's your ear that has the challenge. If you just raise up your hands, I will know you're the one. You know, so if it's the ear, you can raise up the hand. If you're on this side, you have a challenge. Okay, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You can just turn on the volume a little. Don't be afraid of doing that. Yeah. Glory to God. So can we believe God for miracles today? Yes. Does your God do miracles? Yes. Do, you, do you think so? He does. He does. He does. There's, there's a particular leader in this church that has a, a certain health challenge. I'm not even sure if the pastor is aware. I, I just want to just wave your hand so I can, you know, that's, you know, that's what I felt. There's a particular leader that has, I, I don't know, will you, I, I don't know why the Lord called my attention to that. There's a, something about the health. You know, if you just wave your hands, you know, and I will just, um, I will just, um, I will pray for you. I will just pray for you. So it's a simple thing. Um, so the power of God heals. Okay, I've seen the hand. All right. Um, okay, so th there are a few people that have raised up their hand for healing. Um, the healing doesn't have to be tomorrow, next tomorrow. Right now, as you pray, you can be literally healed. And the reason why is that if the message of Jesus is true, then healing must happen because it happened in the Bible. Yes, and we must have the boldness to minister the power of God. Yeah, we must have the boldness to minister the power of God. It's not something, it's the believer's authority. He says, in my name, you shall cast out devils. He says, you shall lay hands upon the sick and he said, they shall recover. So it's not even about you, it's not about I, it's about the fact that the word of God is true and we can believe and stand upon the word of God. Glory to God. So everyone that has a condition, put your hands where it is. Put your hands where it is. Just walk with me. Just walk with me. Put your hands put your hands where it is just put your hands where the condition is you can put the other hands up so i can just just to help me just put your hands where it is glory to god glory to god glory to god especially if it's something you can you know put your hands where it is hallelujah hallelujah i don't have to touch you listen to me look look up here please you will do yourself a lot of dissatisfaction if you need me to touch you because the way your faith will work is that if i don't touch you then you don't get healed then that would be a lot of problem. That would be a lot of problem. If I don't touch you, don't get healed. But I don't have to touch you. The, 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 the centurion says, you don't have to come to my house. He speak the word only. And your servant shall be healed. Glory to God. Are you ready? Just, 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 just put your hands there. If there's someone that is close to them, I love this, a believer's church. If someone that is close to them, put your hands around their shoulders and just extend your anointing towards them. Put your hands around their shoulder. Let's let's do the if someone is raising up their hands for healing, you are closer. Put your hands around their shoulder. Rebuke it. Rebuke it. Rebuke it. Rebuke it. Rebuke it. If someone is putting their hands for healing, put your hands around their shoulder. Rebuke it. Put your hands. I'm waiting for other people to help other people. Rebuke. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. Rebuke it. Rebuke it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command the spirit of infirmity. Loose your body now. I command in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of their bodies now. In the name of Jesus Christ. That lady that has the menstrual problem. I said it's been restored right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I command it be restored right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I command it be restored right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I command that bad condition. Go in the name of Jesus. I command that bad condition. Go in the name of Jesus. Oh yes, that, that lump, that growth. I command it disappear in the name of Jesus Christ. I command you devil of infirmity in the name. Loose them now. Out of their bodies. 
you oppression of the devil you are done in the name of Jesus right now you're healed right now you're healed right now you're healed lift up your hands in thanksgiving because it's done lift up your hands in thanksgiving because it's done lift up your hands in thanksgiving because it's done lift up your hands in thanksgiving because it's done sing the song two or three more times and this is what i want to do let me tell you so this is what it happened this is what happens the way you know when you're healed the way to exercise your faith is to do something that you have not done before all right so all of you that raised up your hand or you put your hand on someone help them do something if they could not bend down let them do it seven times a seven is the number of completion let them bend seven times let them go ahead and do it seven times let them go ahead and do it seven times lady i mean is it your leg Lift it, 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 lift it. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Do it, do it, do it. Do what you cannot do. 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 Amen. Okay, if you felt your body, you, you, you saw that the pain was no longer there, the lump was no longer there, lift up your right hand above your head. I want you to lift it up. Above, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Lift up your right hand above your head. Lift it up. Oh, wow. What happened to you? Tell me. You had a problem with your shoulder and it's all gone right now. The lady at the back, what happened to you? What happened to you? The, yeah, with the hair covered. What happened to you? You feel better right now. Okay, what happened to you? Tell me. Tell me, the lady with the jeans top. Yeah. You've had a hemorrhoid. Yeah. You've been feeling the hemorrhoid pain. Yes. yes. And no, cut, cut. do you have a microphone to give to her? Yes, you I don't take anything that has to do with sugar. And today, I've been feeling in pain since morning. Like, there are times just start, and for a whole week, when I toilet, I only toilet blood. Like, a whole week, I can just be toileting only blood. And I started, I started having the pain today, today. Like, even in church, while I was sitting down, I, the pain has been disturbing me since. And immediately, Pastor said, you have a growth. And I just put my hand on my waist. I was like, I'll let my hand on my bum bum. I just had to put my hand on my waist. And I kid into it. I said, yes, it's talking to me. This word is for me. And it's time that I'm talking to you right now. I can't feel the pain anymore. The pain is no longer there. Praise God. Let's take two or three more. So, so who else? I mean, a lot of you raised up your hands. Lady in the glasses, come tell me what happened. Someone at the back, someone at the back that got healed. Just come, just come, just come. A lot of you raised up. I saw literally about 50 to 70 people raise up their hands. In the choir, come, come. In the choir, come. Yeah, tell me. I need a male guy to come so that God also heals guys, you know. Someone that got healed, guy. Come, come. Oh, mama got healed also. Oh, wow. Yeah. Ear, for four years my ear has been ringing this year so you have a bustling sound in your yes. ear so even when i try to sleep it's always so loud and it's so uncomfortable but i've gotten used to it but it has been a prayer point for me and immediately you said there was somebody with something in, in um like in the ears yeah, i raised up my hand and immediately i felt like a strong feeling around my bed. that's the power of the holy ghost I just want to thank God for oh, this. Oh, glory to God. 
Lord, Lord, raise your God. I, I, I want my man to testify. What happened to you, ma? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, I've been having this ear problem, heart palpitation. Yeah. And uh, this morning, I woke up. Every night, I'll be hearing sounds. Serious sounds. Sounds. I cannot sleep. I keep on fighting it until daybreak. This morning, I was so weak, tired. I didn't know what to do. Yeah. I started having pain here. Then I know that what it is. Wait, here. Mama, wait. I want to pray for you first. Yeah. I see what it is. Hold this microphone. Loose! I... You devil of infirmity, you will not take her. Just let her be there. Let someone else share. Yes. Praise God. Yeah. I've been having issue of asthma. Of asthma? Yeah. Three days back, I've been so down. Even, I think, Friday, Saturday, I, I couldn't sleep. No breath. Like, I've been... Low I, breath. I've been using inhaler. The inhaler. Till Sunday, yesterday. So I just got up on my feet. I said, I don't miss this program. Amen. I have to make it. Amen. Program, Take a deep I breath feel. inside. See, I've received my healing. I've received my healing. In the name of Jesus Christ. Name of Jesus. Awesome. Give to this man. Let's take two people from the choir. Help. Praise God. Yeah. So I, I, I have a very bad habit. I, I fight sharing testimonies. Yeah. So, but this one just took me on away. Who, who is the person? You, I see a document submitted before an office, and it's pending an approval. It, it's pending. You submitted something, maybe it's a proposal, maybe it's something you have to submit. I don't know what it is, but you're submitting an office and it's pending an approval. What are you so that I will pray for you? Okay, if it's more than one person, I would, um, yeah, I really believe that you're the one that the Lord says I should pray for because sometimes, you know, when you have the word of knowledge, you can, you would feel it, yeah, but every other person can partake of it. Okay, but I'm going to pray. It doesn't matter anywhere you are. Yes, go ahead. So I, I had this, um, I've had this throat pain yeah. that just started last week. Yeah. Something that I, I have been running away from eating. Eating, even drinking water. If I want to sleep... So I'll... what happened tonight? So as you just said, we should put our hand. Imagine I just placed my hand. You've not even prayed. I was battling to even swallow my saliva. Right now, as an I can't even feel anything. That's the power of God. It was so, so sudden. That, that is the power strange. of God. Amen. Give it to the lady from the choir. So I've been struggling to breathe for a few days. Yeah. When I was driving, I was just like there was not enough in, um, oxygen. Oxygen. Yeah. So I, I started looking for a mentor or anything that would just help me. And then when you prayed, I didn't, I didn't know whether I was healed. I was just, you know, I'm healed, I'm healed, and then I can breathe well. Praise God. That is wonderful. The other lady from the choir. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I was diagnosed of um, ulcer okay. some months ago, and I refused it. They gave me drugs to So what take. happened tonight? Just now, before you, you said we should lay our hands on places. When I came into church, I was having serious the stomach pains. The ulcer pains, yeah. Yes, or at the higher part of my stomach, and then I had to ask someone to give me water. Before you even said the word, and said just lay your hands i felt like there was this coldness i felt this chill and in in no time i i i i, I can't even find the pain Praise I'm, God. Even, I'm, I'm even confused like i couldn't just believe Hallelujah. it that it has happened That's like i'm healed and i praise God. give it to her praise the lord hallelujah i've been having this um waste uh, pain. Is rejoicing i rejoice in the choir also Praise you know, Lord. let's do something. Let's be the, let's do the, I know we have so many more. Let's be the last, now to teach the word of God. Let's this be the last testimony. And I'll pray for the, all the people with the, you know, all the people that have their approval. And this is what you need to know. Which is easier for you to get an approval or for pain to leave your body or for a deaf ear to be healed? An approval is easier because it's what man can do. But when it's sickness, man can only treat. That's the best they can do. It depends on the body to adjust. Why am I saying that? The same power of God that heals the sick can walk in that direction. All right, let's listen to the testimony. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I had this um, terrible pain, waist pain. Yeah. It comes and goes. Sometimes it just, you know, vibrates to my upper abdomen, just this side. And while you prayed, the pain just disappeared. Praise God. It's no longer there. Praise God. 
All right. Hallelujah. Just because of time, please. All of you that have all their approval issues, just, just a word I'm going to say to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, congratulations, you have received approval. In the name of Jesus Christ, congratulations. So this, this is what I want you to do. This is what I want you to do. Go back home tonight, write a letter to yourself and say, congratulations. This is to inform you that your proposal has been approved. Send it to yourself as an email. That is your testimony. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead and have our seat. Let's go ahead and have our seat. I, I, you know, praise the Lord. What do you even preach when the Reverend Doctor has finished exploding the whole word? What do you preach? You just have to kind of round up and just wrap up and just say something. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I, I'm, of course, I just have just 25 minutes more, and I, I, I value everybody's time, and I, we'll have to ask to close, and we'll come back tomorrow. But I want to talk to you about a subject that the Lord has said in my heart, you know, of recent, attempting great things for God. Oh, wow. Attempting great things for God. A attempting great things for God. I I'm, that's what I'm talking about, but as I, you know, I, some, some touch just came into my spirit, you know, that I would love to deal with. So a lot of people are here and they're believing for a breakthrough. They're believing for a breakthrough. And Pastor, you said something very powerful. He said, a breakthrough does not take a, a long time. It happens in what? In the moment of time. And that is very correct. That's very accurate. That's very point blank scripture. So the question is that someone has been for a breakthrough. So there is a minister that goes like, you know, our ministries at this phase where this number wants to break through to the next phase. There's someone that is strong with the finances and says we want to break to the next phase. Someone is in a relationship state. Maybe you're single and you want to break to the next phase. And you're saying that, okay, this is what I'm praying about. I've come to this conference. What exactly is going to happen to me? So what is a breakthrough? So the first thing is that a breakthrough is surpassing restrictions. It's significant advancement. It's significant advancement. So when in Luke chapter 5, when Peter caught the multitude of fishes, that was a breakthrough. The reason why is that if you remember very well, that night they had caught nothing. So it was, it was something beyond what they were used to. It was something beyond what they were used to. That was a breakthrough. That was a breakthrough. So a breakthrough for someone can look like this. I've been praying for some breakthrough. You know, in my business, every month we do 10 million per month. But I really want things to change. I want it to move to the next level. A breakthrough is that business moving from 10 million per month to 30 million per month. That is a breakthrough. A breakthrough, a breakthrough is that breaking restrictions. Is that breaking restrictions the second thing you want to say is that so this is what people do not know people want to pray for breakthrough but how does a breakthrough happen i want to look at the anatomy of a breakthrough and you know this is not part of my message but as i sat down there i just felt that i need to say this first before i start preaching and you know like pastor I was saying and when he said so about what benny he did he said those very enough sometimes is someone pulling you with their faith to answer a question so how does a breakthrough happen? A breakthrough happens when there are new actions based on the, when there are new actions that produces new results, but it's because of a change in thinking. Yeah. So ultimately, a breakthrough is caused by a change in your belief. A breakthrough is caused by a change in your belief. A breakthrough is caused by what? A change in your belief. Let me tell you something. The way you will know you will break through is that your, mind will, your mindset will start shifting. How does a woman know she's going to give birth? The child does not come, but there are movement in the belly showing that signals and timings have changed. When you are going to... So how, what, how does a breakthrough come? You know, earlier on, we, I had lunch with Pastor Sunday today, and I asked him, and I said that, um, the times of ministry grew, what did you do? He said, the basic thing that happened at those times was personal adjustments. And when he said so, I smiled. He didn't know why I smiled. Because that was the principle of the breakthrough walking. The personal adjustments are a function of a change in belief. Yeah, and that's why I said, what, let me tell you, this is how breakthrough happened. The belief will change. When the belief changed, then the action will change. Then when the action will change, the, the result will change. The change is result is what you call a breakthrough. So Peter had caught nothing all night, Luke chapter 5. And the word of Jesus Christ came to him, said, launch into the deep. 
launch into the deep. Listen to me. Firstly, he says, sir, we have fished all night. The, the, the fourth thinking is that there's no need to exert more effort because nothing good can come out of here. That was his default thinking. But all of a sudden, it made a switch. There was a change in his belief. And because of his change in his belief, he casted out the nets. And when he cast out the nets, then the Bible says he had the breakthrough. He caught what more out of fish and the net began to break. The reason I'm saying this to you is that because it's the first night, you need to understand the pattern of your breakthrough. In this meeting, one of the things God will do to you is that he will send you men. And when he sends you men, they will open your mind by the Spirit. That's what happens. And what it might open your mind by the Spirit, there's a default setting of your mind. So your mind will always want to go back to where it is. But they will open your mind by the Spirit. How do I understand that? The Bible says this about Mary. The Bible says the angel came to Mary and said, you will have a child. And Mary said, how will I have a child? And she was struggling to have a child. Mary said, and the angel said, this girl cannot receive this thing. He said, let's help her. He said, your, 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 your older aunt Elizabeth is pregnant. Go and meet Elizabeth. Why did he say go and meet Elizabeth? What he wanted to do is that go and see what I've done in somebody else so that you can see what I can do in you. What God was trying to use was to use an outer manifestation of his power to open the neural pathway in his mind. As soon as at least as soon as Mary got there, now there's a part of this that most people have never seen before. When Mary got there, remember that Mary was just a few weeks old. There's no way a natural person can tell a woman that is two weeks pregnant. Yes. How did Elizabeth know she was pregnant? When Elizabeth said that blessed is the mother of my Lord, it was a just it was a spiritual prophecy and spiritual recognition of what was going on the inside. There was no way in the natural she could have known she was pregnant. Maybe because she was she didn't have a belly, she was just two weeks pregnant, nothing had changed. When she said that, Mary said, Hey, something has happened. And that thing helped Mary believe. And that's what the Bible says: Blessed is she that believe it, for there shall be performance. So what the angel did was to bring her to a point of believing. One of the things you'll discover is that in this conference, ultimately all the speakers will say the same thing in different ways. And you wonder what is going on, and it's a simple thing. They are going to gradually bring you to a place of what believing. Every time they speak, it's not a waste of time, because some say, I'll come on Monday, I'll not come on Thursday. Each layer of truth destroys a certain level of unbelief, a certain level of tradition, a certain level of mindset and struggle that holds you back. Ultimately, you have been transformed from glory to glory in the same image that you have seen. Glory to God. So you need to understand, you need to understand how breakthrough comes. When breakthrough comes, there's a fundamental change in your belief. This is how you know. You know, so the, when Pastor began to talk about the frustration, the frustration, the frustration is what you feel. What leads to the frustration is a change in your belief. That's why the car you were celebrating, the baby boy, you look at it and say, why should I be just driving this car? The reason why is that there's a change in your belief system about yourself, your future, about what you should be driving. But the question is that what, does, what is a vehicle in which God used to bring the change? I'm helping you understand the avenue so that when it's happening to you, you can... The beautiful thing about driving in developed countries is this. When you see the signposts, you can tell you're on the right track. Because of the way theology is, and it's not sometimes the way we learned it, we're on the right track, but we become tired and depressed because we have not been thought to see the signpost of the Spirit on the, on the road. So what a great teacher does is that it begins to say that by the time you see this, this is what this means. By the time you see this, this is what this means. So what I'm saying to you is this. How do you know you have a breakthrough? Is that number one, your mindset will start shifting. Praise God. I said, praise God. Hallelujah. There are certain things you just be like, ah. You're like, ah, no, 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 no. You, you, your mindset was just shifting. And when it starts shifting that way, you need to align so that you can cooperate to birth the purpose of the Spirit. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Someone say Hallelujah. So what will happen is this, because there's two things I want to say here. I want to establish truth. So when you see your mindset shifting, for example, all of you that have approvals today, we prayed now, as your mindset shifted, 
believers can leave it in prayer. But the one that will see manifestation, the way you respond to that thing is knowing that it is done. Because my mindset has shifted. So, the mindset has shifted. And you allow it shifts. When the mindset shifts, this is how I know you've received though. Then your action will change. Question. Why people die in the process is this. They say the mindset has shifted, but the action does not change. So, logically, they are still where they are. If your mindset has shifted, then your action leads to change. Praise God. Did you notice as that guy, that keyboard went off like that, there was a change in the atmosphere? Until there's a change, there can't be corresponding change in the environment. Until there's a change here, there can't be what? A corresponding change in the environment. So it's not just your belief. It's the action based on your belief that will now cause a corresponding change in the environment. So why not you vroom, vroom, ever looked again. In the spirit, you have to do vroom. You have to take actions of vroom. When you take action of vroom, the people that don't notice your business will not look there. Ah, what happened? People that don't notice you for marriage will not look there. What happened? They, they, they will not look there. What's going on? Everybody's mind went to him. If he was playing in the same frequency and rhythm, you'd have not noticed. But because something changed, the whole attention changed. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. So one of the ways you used to know this is, I began to explain that, is the belief and the action. So the belief, watch this, it's two things. The belief is important and the action. And the reason why the belief is very difficult to change is this. Everyone look at me. Everybody tells themselves a story that makes them sin and makes them responsible. So when Jesus Christ in John went to the man that was at the pool of Bethesda, he says, rise up and walk. The man says, I have no man to help me. The reason why I had to say that was this. You have to say something in your defense or else you'll be irresponsible. But you know, that's it. So when you say, do you want to marry? Can I marry myself? Because you keep asking this question. So you have to say something that makes you look responsible. You say, do you want the church to go? What, what kind of question is that? Is that not what my prayer has been? And the question is that that kind of belief puts you in a certain place. So when light comes, you'll find your default setting. Because that's the thing. If you have a phone, there's default setting. But when light is coming, the default setting has to change to revelation setting. So instead of feeling helpless about not being married, say that it's time. I take my responsibility, I'm going to be married. Instead of being frustrated and feeling helpless about your state, it's time. I'm going to do something right now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Just to let you know that how God helps you to position for breakthrough so that your thinking can change. Because, you know, because the way, the way it works is that if there's, you know, Pastor, I said this. You will go through season that you want to be depressed. It's a pattern of breakthrough. This is what a pattern of breakthrough. One of the patterns of breakthrough is this. Frustration precedes breakthrough. Write it somewhere. It's a pattern of breakthrough. And Pastor, I began to explain it. I'm like, ah, why is this man looking at my notes? Frustration precedes breakthrough. You know why it's important to be frustrated? Frustration makes you open. If you are not frustrated, you'll be proud. I'm telling you, there are certain fasting. See, you have not prayed because you have not found the need to pray. Once you find the need to pray, you'll be amazed how much you can pray. You be you yourself. You will shock yourself. That, ah, now maybe this. I shall be pray. Oh. Someone told me, say, ah, pastor, you lost weight. I said, you have not found the need to lose weight. That's why. I said, if you have found the need to fast and pray, ah, you will lose weight. You will be, ah, it to tell. Ah, it to tell on your body. It to tell. You have not just found it. 
You say, no, I have it. You've not found it. You know, there's a way you don't, everybody has coping mechanism. So you are coping. It's when you reach the end of yourself. Didn't you read the story of Anna? Anna went to the temple. She goes every year, but that year was different. She got to the end of herself. She said, Lord, forget me. If you give me a prophet, I'll give you. If you give me a son, I'll give you a prophet. The reason why she came to that conclusion was this. She became open. Normally, every time she prayed, Father, give me a son so that I can show my stepwife that I too can have a child. All of us, my own child is the first. My own child is the first. My own child. She was still doing that. The time she had the child, she came to her hand of her and said, Father, you know what? Let's leave this thing alone. Just do it. You need a prophet? I will bring the child back to you. How can you vow what you need the most? You must have gotten to a place. You must have gotten to a place. That's the beauty of frustration. Paul prayed, 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 prayed. The Spirit of God told him, he said, my grace is sufficient for you. He said that my power is coming to full manifestation in your weakness. Ah, what does that mean? He said, there's something about when you are weak that brings out the fullness of the, and I know what it means, I'm telling you. Once you feel very qualified, there is a way your dependency on the Spirit will not be strong. There's a confidence in the Spirit, oh, and that's financial boldness. But that's what I'm talking about. There's a way you're like, hey. And when God wants to really bless you, he will call you to walk upon the waters. Hey. Are you listening? Yes, sir. Listen to me. All this business, I did 30 million. That's not walking upon the water. Hey. He will call you and say, okay, let's do 250. Hey. And, 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 and you will look to the right and left. They normally borrow me 5 million to do the contract. Who will borrow me 250? And God will say, look up to heaven. Oh. He will bring you to a place where you can see no man but Jesus Christ. Are you here? And some of you here, you, you think men disappointed you. It was God that shielded you from, from help that will cripple your destiny and future. I'm telling you, I, I'm grateful for those that turned against me. Because if they didn't turn against me, there are certain dimensions my destiny will not come out. I'm telling you. And many of you that help people unnecessarily, you must know that some help you have, God prevents it. Because as you try to help them, you cripple their destiny. When I was a young child, my mother had a poultry. But there was this now local chicken that we had in our house, just at the back of our house. And I was fascinated because normally the poultry was a systematic way of laying eggs. The, the, the chick never used to produce chick. But this was the one that would produce chick. This was a local chick. So the, the, the chick had laid about 10 eggs or so. And she would lay over them. And we were just watching. I was fascinated. I've never seen like this before. So eventually she had laid and only one egg was left that had not become a chick. And I was very compassionate, very nice, very loving. You know, all of that chick were out and they were walking small, small. So you know when I went to the egg? I went and I broke the egg myself. <laughs> and I broke the egg myself. And the chick actually came out. But two days after, the chick died. And my mother told me something. He said, when the chick comes out, in trying to break the eggshell, that's when they develop strength in their legs. He said, when you helped it, you you what they, you destroy his ability to discover strength in his leg, and because he couldn't move, he couldn't feed. Because he couldn't feed, he had to die. Praise God. So the people that refused you, thank God for them. And the reason why is that they are helping you develop strength in your legs. My biggest troubles, are, my biggest blessings have come out of my biggest challenges. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you, the, my biggest trouble has come because there's a way you see God. Hey, it says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. He said, because thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff. Before he got there, he didn't understand rod and staff. He said, I understood shepherd. Rod and staff means it can be there. You don't see his person, but you see his, you, you see his walk. Mm. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I said glory to God. Hallelujah. And the reason I'm saying so is that, you know, so someone said, why am I born in Nigeria? You don't even understand destiny. Because you don't understand destiny.
destiny. Praise God. But by the divine destiny, by divine destiny, look at, I'm, I'm telling you, frustrations. As Jesus was going to the cross, the Bible says he was tired. There was a man, Simon the Syrian. He was compelled to carry the cross. Just imagine, not that he wanted to carry it. He was compelled to carry the cross because of that action. His name entered the Bible. Did he realize that his pain will make him popular? Just one line, though. Know. Hope you know that there are some apostles that you don't even know what they did. Like Thaddeus. <laughs> I'm telling you, you know, recently, me and my children were doing 12, 12 apostles of the Bible, just going through their recitals. I was going, in, and it occurred to me that there are some apostles, because we have to begin to argue, say, this is an apostle. I said, no, no, this is an apostle. So I had to go, because I'm like, this is really an apostle, you know, but there's no record. But Simon the Syrian, frustrated, compelled, he carried cross, and it was written in the scriptures. Certain cross you carry. Is what you'll be known for. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I said glory to God. Hallelujah. So one of the things about, one of the powerful things, so this is a personal breakthrough, that breakthrough, breakthrough, frustration precedes breakthrough. And you need to know that. The reason why I need to tell you that is that if Peter had caught fish, would he have paid attention to Jesus Christ? Oh. I'm telling you, the reason why that, when those guys had come, the boat would have been busy. Yes. Because there would have been other market women selecting, come down and sell and pick, 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 pick. Is that not true? Yes. The reason why he could pay attention was because the net was empty and he was washing the net. In the quiet season of your life, pay attention to what God is doing. Glory to God. The second thing that frustration does is that it makes you open. You become, because the thing about when something is working, it's difficult to change. That's the truth. When something is working, it's difficult. So when you're frustrated, it tells you it's not working. Then you now become very open. Two things become, you become open and you begin to search. And that's where the Spirit of God needs you to be so that you can have answers. So that the spirit can begin to search the deep things of God. But the thing that does that to you is frustration. It will open you up. It will make you search. Embrace your frustration. I'm telling you. Have you not seen girls that are very beautiful? When they are young, they don't care something. Like but once they start eating milestone ages, they will not say, ah, maybe it's because I cannot cook. I'm not saying that's the reason why. They, say, they will not start reflecting. Because they've come to a place that they should have certain results. But them not having that result is causing them to be open and to what? Reflect. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I said glory to God. Hallelujah. And the last thing frustration does is that when you begin to search, then you'll not find when you hear Bishop Wedeko say that, I went into three days fast, it was frustration. I'm telling you, when he saw poverty all around him, he had to go into a three days fast because he could see this future that will be begging bread. He could see it. Because, but the finding is the work of that. Let's round up this teaching by looking at two scriptures, First Kings chapter 18 verse 17 and Judges chapter 6 verse 7 I need 5 more minutes is that okay Pastor Sunday? 5 more minutes okay so have you gotten something now? yeah so do you know I'm saying this I, want, I said this so that you can see the milestones of a breakthrough because this is a week of breakthroughs yeah I, I want, so, so, when you, so by the time you begin to have that thing that is challenging your mind, you're like, oh, wow. I, I mean, I remember one time I called my friend. It was just February. My friend said, I've given 200 million to the gospel this year. He's a minister of the gospel. He said, I've given 200 million this year. 
Ha. <laughs> we were talking. I was on the bed. My wife was beside me. My wife said, who is that? <laughs> this was February. He said, who is that? I mentioned the name. He said, hi. I couldn't sleep. After that, I did transfer. Because I knew I didn't just hear something. God was telling me something. Yes, yes. Let me tell you something. Eh? You are not just hearing. You have been instructed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Some of you, you have to turn on your marketing budget. Some of you, you have to go into strategic partnership. It's not as if you cannot grow your business, but you need to move to with someone, but you're afraid. And your fear is limiting your growth potentials. Some of you just have to go and meet the sister at this service and say, sister, the truth is this. I've been praying about you. Why have you been praying about me? Your, your name comes up regularly in my prayer. <laughs> and I just want you to be awakened. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are, are you getting blessed already? Yeah, yeah. First Kings chapter 18, verse 17. Uh, First Kings chapter 18, verse 17. Oh, lift up your hands and speak in other tongues. Speak in other tongues. I speak boldly. Speak boldly. Mambru kata nebro teke zuste brada matalo kopaya. Shevrinto krema nandruski franti kama na franti. Membolo potele rebe somblo kopani shosh. Epali suste lebre ketele rebe segede. In Jesus' name we pray. Please just leave this. I want to quote another scripture first just to help the prayer. Genesis 27 verse 20. I love to pray with scripture so that you don't pray in relevances. Oh yeah, because you know, now there's a lot of prayer ministry going on. Sometimes there's a lot of energy but little results. So when it said, let's pray aggressively, people think the intensity of prayer is linked with the voice. No, sir. Intensity of prayer or the authority of prayer is not linked to voice. All those ones are emotions. Authority of prayer is linked to the word of God. The more revelation backed prayer you pray, the more authority is in them of the Spirit. The reason why is that prayer is backed up by the Word. The power of prayer is in the Word itself. See what the Bible says here. This was when, this was, I want to show you something here. Now, this is what I want you to believe God for yourself. This was when Jacob deceived his father and brought the venison. And Isaac looked at the timing. He said, no, you should have not gone so far. This should have taken you about nine hours. You came in 30 minutes. And Isaac said to his son, how is it that you have found this so quickly my son and he said because the lord your god brought it to me the challenge was not what was done it was that why did isaac believe the lie the only reason why i believed the lie was because it was a norm in their family yeah. Yeah. are you getting me yeah. you don't understand if they said that if they said that ah oh, if pastor announced that oh pastor Bridget is coming here tomorrow we know Pastor God, you come to this church. Yes. You will not be, you would, you would ever to pay for it. But if Pastor says, well, tomorrow the president is coming here. I'm like, hmm. In fact, let me let me make it to the president of the USA. Wow. You, you see what I'm saying? It will be difficult to believe because it's not a norm. So for Isaac to say that, okay, ah, wow, God said, come, let me pray for you. It's because in their family it's known that what should take a time. That the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob normally cuts it short and bring it together. Are you getting me? So that was why the old man could believe it. That was why, you don't you understand. If you want to lie, you have to lie with something that is reasonable. So it says, it says, Your God brought it to me. That means that it because it's a prayer I want to pray for you. And and oh wow, message translation says it this way: it said, I found it so quickly because your God cleared the way for me. Look for it in the message translation. He said, I found it. He said, 
How did you get it so quickly? He said, because your God cleared the way for me. This is my prayer as we leave this conference. That everywhere the way needs to be cleared, that the Spirit of God will go ahead and clear the way for you. The Spirit of God will go ahead and clear the way for you. You will testify that you found it so quickly. You will testify that you found it so quickly. You will testify you found it so quickly. In the name of Jesus Christ, shout I receive it. Please, you can have your seats. Praise God. It's very important. So when you pray, when you pray, that's the way you pray. That the way the Spirit of God walked in this pattern and cleared the way, that let the way be cleared for me. Joseph said to his brothers, he said, God sent me ahead of you to take care of you. Another prayer you pray is that the Lord will send kind men ahead of you. Joseph said to his brother, he said, you didn't sell me to slavery. It's God that sent me ahead of you to take care of you. You will pray as you go into the office that the Lord will send kind men ahead of you. As you go into a marriage, the Lord will send nice people ahead of you. As you go into a location, it will send nice people ahead of you. Not just anybody, kind-hearted people. You will pray the Dockers prayer. The Bible says, as Paul had them preach, that God opened the heart of Dockers. He opened a heart. He opened a heart. You will pray, those that matter in my industry, that the Spirit of God will open their hearts to me. They will just say, ah, wow, you're wearing, I like green, oh. Come, come, what's your name? And that's it. The last administration, everybody I know told me about this guy that was related to the president that became very influential. And people could not understand what the connection was. I said, Is the heart was just opened. And that's it. The heart was just open. That's it. All right, let's go. First Kings 18, verse 17. Judge, Judge chapter 6, verse 16. And this is what I want to use to just push you forward. First Kings 18, 17. I wanted to notice something because I said that attempting great things for God, but we talk about the patterns of breakthrough first. So these are the two scriptures about attempting things for God. He said that it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah, Elijah was a prophet. That Ahab said to him, Art thou the one that troubled Israel? You need to understand what he was saying. He said, You are doing things that are shaking the whole of Israel. That is what it means to attempt great things for God. That you do something that the impact is felt globally. Remember who was talking, it was not a peasant. This was the king of Israel speaking to Elijah. He says, Are thou the one that troubled Israel? Judges chapter 6, verse 16. And the reason why is that I, ste- I believe that this church is stepping into a season where certain of you must begin to attend great things for the Lord. Look at what the Bible says. Judge chapter 6, verse 16. The angel of God told Gideon, and he said, the Lord is with you. Surely I will be with you. He says, you will smite the Egyptian as one man. What does that mean? What it means is that what an army should do, one person will do it. I'm showing you what to believe God in your life. Will. When I say attempting, at, <laughs> when I say attempting great things for God, he said, as one man, what the old church should do, you stand up and do it. I see some strange things though. Yesterday, one of my sons sent me a message. I said, Pastor, just to let you know, I've given 500 million this year. I, I, I said, are you serious? I said, yeah. Just one. One person. He said, I've given 500 million this year. Attempting great things for God. What are great things? Daniel calls them exploits. They that know the Lord, they that they that know the Lord their God shall be strong and they shall do exploit. What are great things? Notable achievements. Notable achievements. 
notable achievement in ministry notable achievement at work what are great things striking accomplishments accomplishment that strikes what are great things bold undertaking bold undertaking wow and this is you making up your mind because life is about taking responsibility you need to take responsibility to do what great things areas of great things in pioneering let the lord use you to bring innovative ideas to the it space let the lord use you to bring a solution that the whole of ibuja will buy into let the lord use you to let the lord use you in church planting but how do you start by taking responsibility another area of doing great things is in soul winning some of you here as small group leaders group leaders that group cannot remain 50 every month we can go from 50 to 200 so winning doing great things for the lord you know as i got into abuja i just remember that not call one of my people and, and i mean she's a lot of people know her in abuja now her name is prophetess bc adamo and I, because she has said pastor anytime you come just say and i said I said, this is amazing, all the things I see, because she was my staff, she was in charge of membership in our church, she was a staff, she was a full-time staff, membership in our church, she was one of the people that started the boss ministry in our church when she was there. She got married and moved to Abuja, and she got married to that church and moved to Abuja, and, you know, but when I think about her time in our church, this is what I'm saying, I can see when she was here, she started this, what would they say you started here? You can't just sit down for five years and not change. Attempting great things for God. This is the problem. We Like Pastor you said, this generation, so much revelation, no results. And that's why the world does not respect us. The biggest, the biggest card dream cannot be to be worshipping a musician. The biggest guardian must be the home of our God. Because there's no other name under heaven wherein men shall be saved than the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that the church is not very far out of the world. He said the world is very far out of the church. There's a way we can just move back and move back and be like, we, we're in our church corner. And God is saying, it's time for us to attend great things. The business people here, it's time to attend great things. The spiritual leaders, it's time to attend great things. The third area of great things, I mean, I have seven areas, but I'll just do three because of time. The last area of great things is in kingdom partnership finances. Write it somewhere. When will be the first time you give your 100 million? Hey, people give such. Write it that as the Lord leave it, when they have this kind of conversion, I will fund it. The reason I'm saying so is that if you don't dream of doing great things for the Lord, you will never do it. He told David, as far as it was in your heart, David, it was in David's heart. It must be in your heart. Because now we've spoken about breakthrough, but the reason for the breakthrough is for God's purpose. Because prosperity that is self-centered is destructive. As one man, it says, as one man. You will just say, Pastor, myself and my group were bringing 100 first time at church this Sunday. Ooh, what an inspiration! 100 first time at this Sunday. Wow, what an inspiration! Oh, glory to God. Attempting great things. You will say, Pastor, you know, this is what we're doing for Nigeria to cause a transformation in the transport system, in the consulting world. Well, there's an idea we'll bring that will change the whole of Abuja. It says, 
Why do you believe? Because as one man. Stop looking for partners to do what you can do. Oh my God. Oh my God. Stop looking for partners to do what it. When they say one thing, you say, let, let me do my part. It's not your part. Everything belongs to you. You, you take it. You, you, you take it. When the pastor talks, you know he's talking to you. you we, we, we came one by one. We live one by one. We are not in, a, we are not in an association here. Praise God. I said, 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 praise God. Oh, no. There are some things we have to leave behind as one man. In real estate, as one man. In IT, as one man. In consulting, as one man. Attempting great things for the Lord. Who can forget Lekki 98? Just because one man chose to attempt something great for the Lord. Can I be honest with you? Church people teach faith but don't leave it. We confess so much on finance and faith and prosperity and we own the world. But our actions do not match up what we are saying. And that's why they don't respect our God. As soon as we are done talking faith, then we talk small figures. We start talking about small projects. You need to learn to chew more than what you can so God can help you chew some. And until you step out of the water, you will never know you can walk on the water. Until you try, you, you will never know you can. Until you try, you will never know you can. If there's a family that should be taking more risks based on faith, it should be us. But we are the one that hold back the most. We are the ones that hold back the most. We are the one that hold. But this is a clarion call to begin to attempt great things for God. Why is it important to attempt great things for God? Great things shows God's approval. It shows God's approval. There are some things you see, they don't have to say God is here. Praise God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word. I'm out of time. Oh, wow. Son is going to attempt great things for the Lord. Yes. I mean, go, go places you've never gone. I, I, I was sharing with them. I said that I went to University of Lagos. And I remember that normally in University of Lagos, when they say we resume for the first one month, <laughs> we're all playing, not really resuming. I remember my friend just said, ah, we're just in the hostel, B3 Temarere. He said, let's just use this time well. I said, what should we do? He said, let's pray 10 hours every day. 10 hours every day. In fact, we didn't even tell him, not, not, no, not this one that you pray to us, you post on social media, you know, this dimension. Oh, I've just entered a potter, a potter, a potter, dimension, 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 potter. And like, just this 20 minutes that you have entered potter. <laughs> oh my God. You better open your eyes, you may be in a cage. <laughs> Praise God. So we chose to pray for 10 hours. I mean, one of our pastors, my, my friend, Pastor DJ, <laughs> I, I mean, he will come and look for me. He, he, because I didn't tell him, but he would just know. He came in the morning and said, hey, where's Pastor Balaji? He's praying. He's praying upstairs. Then he called the Where is he? Upstairs. So by the fourth day, he said, sorry, sir. What's going on? He said, every time I've come for the past four days, that you're always praying. He said, I said, oh, we're well, on a 10-hour prayer challenge. Ah, so, wow. I did not know that was what's going on. Because you don't tell people you pray. The result of prayer will announce that you pray. The Queen Elizabeth said, I feared the prayer of John Knox. More than 1,000 British handmen. That's what it means to attempt great things for God. You attempt great things for the Lord. Stop talking. Start doing Stop talking, start doing. Let's pray. Stand on your feet. Oh my God. Is someone accepting responsibility to do greater things today? Okay, lift up your hands and tap into it today. Lord, I'm accepting responsibility. I'm, I am accepting responsibility for greater things. Oh yes, I am accepting. I'm accepting responsibility for greater things. Oh, glory to God. I am accepting responsibility for greater things. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. We're believing that there will be fresh release of grace in this place.
Lenos coven and Bruntella Braca Shobra de la Baco Tenascus Zenemeratinemanto Capalos Coveresh. In Jesus' name we pray. One of the beautiful things about the gospel is that the word of God is taught in power. He said, The flesh profited nothing, he said, The spirit quickness. And this is a prayer. As you accept responsibility, let the grace of God find expression to make it just as he has put in your spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I declare over you today that by the power of the Holy Ghost, that where those have been locked before, dimensions you could not penetrate before, by the virtue of being connected here, they have flung open before you. Everybody listen very well. The Bible says, as Peter was brought out of jail by the angel, that the gate opened of their own accord. Nobody touched it. The gate opened of their own accord. I don't know if it's a city gate you are looking at. If it's an industry gate you are looking at. By the same prophetic power that opened those gates, let those gates open of their own accord. Where you have experienced rejection and disappointment, this is what the scripture says. He said, the stone with the, with the builders have rejected. He said, the same stone has become the chief corner. In the place of your rejection, you will become accepted. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please indulge me one minute. Just wave your hands and thank him specifically for what you have received today. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Mm, I know what you will do. Father, I thank you I have received today. No, specifically. Father, I thank you because I've received the grace for the 250 million contract that you spoke about. I've received it. Father, I thank you because my business has now moved from 20 to 50 million. I thank you, Lord, because you have sent kind men ahead of me for my interview that happened on the 4th of January. Okay, lift up your voice and thank you for that. Specifically, go ahead and thank him. 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 In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Did you receive it? It's done. Once again, thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Praise God. Pastor Mrs., thank you. At least I was able to add. Uh, you know, I, for more pastor, I just have to add one or two layers. Pastor, I thank you for doing such an amazing work with us. Thank you. God bless you. My mindset has shifted, and I'm achieving great things for God. Hallelujah. Let's give God glory tonight. Let's thank him. Let's thank him. Father, we are grateful. We are thankful because your word comes alive in our hearts tonight in the name of Jesus. And it finds expression in every aspect of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's celebrate our pastors tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. You may take your seats. Hallelujah. It's time to package our offering. If you need an offering envelope, please wave, wave properly, wave above your head so that the ushers can give, place an envelope into your hands. And if you're doing a transfer, the account details are 016,053170, 016,053170, GT Bank, Holy Hill Church. And if you also want to use the POS, you can do so immediately after service. You can see any of the ushers, they are with their tags, the purple tags. So you can see any one of them and then they would help you out with their POS machines. Hallelujah. Do we still have anyone raising up their hands? You don't have an envelope yet. Please wave, wave, wave properly so that it can minister to you. So while we are packaging our offering, I will just announce that we are back here tomorrow, 5.30 p.m. Hallelujah. You were blessed tonight, right? Come with your friend. Don't come alone. You know, let the news go out there. Come with your friends. We want this place all packed up. And then we are awakening to God's things, great things, mighty things that he's said to do. Hallelujah. Are we ready with our offering? Okay, Father, we are grateful tonight for the privilege to give to you. Thank you, Father, because there's a multiplication of every seed sown tonight in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because it translates into our lives, into things money can buy and things money cannot buy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. Do we have anyone worshiping with us for the first time?
in Holy Hill Church. This is your first time. I just want you to rise up to your feet. Let's just give you a warm welcome tonight. Holy Hill Church, let's give them. Be shy. Just rise up to your feet. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Please just rise. I can't see anyone. Okay. Okay, yes, 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 yes. Please, if you're around them, just give them a warm welcome. Let's shake hands with them. Thank you so much for coming. I'm sure you are blessed. And then please just make sure you attend every other service in this conference. And God bless you mightily. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Can we appreciate um, the gift of God? You know, the message is one. The message is one. And um, you, know, you know that God put his word in the mouth of his servant to speak as oracles. And you, you called... You could see here that it is, you know, while while Pastor while Pastor Bolaji was was teaching the other half of the message, you, you could see that it's a wake up call. It's like an alarm. You know, it's like coming to hit you and wake you from sleep. That look, you are you are almost getting late for school, or maybe you've overslept. Then suddenly your parents realize that you are still sleeping. And they are kicking you and pouring water on your head. You know that kind of, that you need to step into stuff. And I believe that when we come back next year, next year is even too far. In three months, people will see you and they will not believe that. That is one I was just hearing. <laughs> You know, you know, I heard the hundred souls too, but I heard that. <laughs> I heard the hundred, hundred souls too. I said, thank God for the first hundred first time I bought that. <laughs> that 500 million wake up call is, it's, that will bring a lot of souls. <laughs> thank you very much, Pastor. We, we are so honored, we are so grateful. Um, you know, when we when we extended an invitation last year um, for him to come, when when he called me to tell me that conference Friday and Saturday, Friday night, Saturday morning, that was the original arrangement. But the conference they are going for that is going for this weekend in in, in England, the, the 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 only date that opened up in that facility was this Saturday. Up and up, opened up. And based on their planning and logistics, it's not supposed to be in Nigeria now. It's a massive conference they're planning. If you had a kind of big conference going on on Saturday, you should not be in Nigeria on Monday, even on much more Tuesday. But, but because of his commitment and his love, because there's nothing... you for we don't we don't take it for granted thank you for squeezing in the time to be here and it's one of the signs that God uses to show you when he has approved your connection with someone um, they they come to you with a cost you know I remember the first two times that pastor you came to our church the first time he came to you was also going to go to London that weekend, we were standing at church in London. When he came, he said, I'm not supposed to be here, but I am supposed to be here. God will have me be here. That's why I'm here. The second time we invited him, he had, a, he had an injury on his leg. He had a cut. So he couldn't wear shoes. So that was enough. And he was flying in from Ghana. Came straight. He said, I'm tired. I even have a cut. I can't even wear shoes. I wear sandal. But I have to be here. So thank you very much, sir, for for um for the show of love 
we will never forget um, tonight. And we and by, and by the grace of God, the the word that you have spoken over our lives, they will manifest in Jesus' name. But there's something I want you to do. I know you've given up your mic, but I want you to come and pray. I I feel um, that you should speak a word over the church. I I could feel your heart when you were preaching about that church. You could see we are saying some things in between. But I I feel strongly that I want you to just pray over our work. And, and, you know, like you asked me that what are the things that I want, I expect. I said, I want God to release some graces that that is upon your life. Um, upon our church, so I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not ashamed to ask when I need something that somebody carries. So please come and pray. Let's stand. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know the beautiful thing is that there can be growth in grace. The Bible says that. With great grace, the apostle weakness and great power followed. So it almost means as if the great grace was linked with great power. Just how do you compare the two of them in the same verse? Glory to God. Then 2 Corinthians says, God is able to make all grace. I I mean, it's just the adjective that qualifies the word grace in different ways. God is able to make all grace. So he said, with great grace, he said, all grace, you know. and, And that's what we're just believing for. And you know the thing? For personally to say this, the church is really people. It's not like a building. What it's really saying is for you. That's what it is. This is just basically for you. Because it's the overflow of what happens there that touches everything. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nembo kosiala menvo kepalo sovelet. Embrade kume ne vilo sevrati kapalos. Entres kita nimbrande non komboni ne suste legadi. Pelos kopreketa shuli patana matea. The Bible says, and Jacob smelt his children. He said, the smell of my son is a smell of the field that the Lord has blessed. I speak over holy hill. I speak over its leadership. I speak over its membership. That your smell is the smell of the field that the Lord has blessed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, your fragrance will reach all. Fragrance that will pull in attraction. Fragrance that will pull in people. That will pull in impact. That will pull in influence. That will pull in resources. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let there be freshness. Ah, freshness, fresh results, and this is my last blessing. From this hour, break old records, records, oh, parosiata, brade kumene vito nai. It says we have never seen it in this fashion before. I say from this hour, break old records. Set new record. As a ministry, break old records. Set new record. As individual, break old records. Set new record. Break church court records. Set new record. Break resources record. Set new record. In the name of Jesus. It's done. Amen. Say with me. Say, I break old records. I set new records. Hallelujah. Amen. Notice this. Oh, I wanted to go. No, I should write a letter. Write it. Write it there. I break old records. Set new records. Write it there. And when you write it there, write it there that next of how I broke old records. 
and set new records. And let me tell you something, it works. Um, I mean, Pastor, I can tell you, the time you come to my office, you'll see these checks. You know, in the other time I wrote this, this. And one day I just saw that one thing I had written as a check and put on my wall. And it had happened. But when I wrote it, I looked like an idiot even to me. I was like, you are really an idiot. How would you get this kind? It was a money, it was a money figure. And it happened. Even in terms of church. When our church was 200, I would write... That thing is so powerful because when I chose 200, I would write first service, second service, third service, fourth service, and I write the numbers. You know, amazingly, we have a lot of churches that do four services now. We've not been able to go beyond four services. Maybe because I didn't write five services that time. Yeah. But the Lord has, the Lord, the Lord has blessed us tremendously. We we're looking at the figures. We we're looking at the figures. They were t- he was telling me that the first time I was in our church last year, how many thousand? 20, 21? 21,000 first time as last year. 21, I know that not all first timers feel cards. 21 first timers last year. I'm just telling you that attempt great things for the Lord. Our church in Alimo Show, we started now two weeks old. This last Sunday now, there were 1,250 second service. How do you attempt great things for God? Believe it. See it, believe it. Now, the blessing has been released and the Spirit has Benny Hinn asked Pastor Chris a question because, you know, because of the theology gap in a lot of things, especially when people are mentioning the power of God. Because people said, how do you now make the power really exist if you want to do it? And Pastor Chris sat down. I, I wish I could sit that way. And Pastor Chris said, consciousness. It's a consciousness. It's how to make the power. It's a consciousness. He said, the moment you choose to be conscious, he said the power will rise. That's what he meant when he said be strong. Be strong means be conscious in the grace. He said be strong in the Lord. Be strong in that connection. As you go today, the most important thing is the consciousness of the word you have received. Thank you, Pastor Sunday. Hallelujah. Please, let's allow, let's allow our guests, um, let's allow them. Praise the name. Let, we may be seated. Let's sit. All right. So we are back tomorrow. The conference day two is tomorrow. Um, please don't come late and um, don't decide to watch from home. Pastor is back tomorrow again. Pastor Ajani is back here tomorrow. Um, then we're going to have with us Bishop Wale Ajayi. Um, Bishop Wale, I was I went for a camp meeting in Lekki in like eight years ago or so. In Lekki. And that was the first time I sat under the ministry of Pastor Wale Achai. And I had desired since then that this is someone and we just connected. We the first we dined, you know, because the camp meeting we were all sleeping. All the pastors were sleeping on camp. I think we should do one of those kind of meetings where you just, all of us would leave our homes and we'll go to a camp. We'll have morning, we'll have morning service, afternoon service, night service. They will not be having fellowship after fellowship into the night. We're talking into the night till like 3 a.m. So meeting ended at maybe around 10 o'clock. We talked into the night, like 3 a.m. Daniel Ikwenobe was there. With his wife. I didn't know. It was later when I came around. People were just talking different things. And I just knew. Uh, and the, the, the depth of revelation. The man is a custodian of that grace. Of the Archbishop of Benson. And he doesn't, only, he doesn't only teach the word. Signs and wonders also follows. Very deep. Very practical. Very bold. Um, he carries that mantle of the Archbishop. He's as good as the Archbishop. We're coming here tomorrow. So let's be all, let all come, let's um, come early. And, and I'm so grateful that Wednesday is public holiday. Thursday and Friday too. Huh? 
Wednesday and Thursday. But you know, Friday is automatically. Uh, I'm not telling you. Is I'm just. We just know. <laughs> All of us know what it means. We cannot have public holiday on Monday, and um, Wednesday and Thursday. Abuja does not work again on Friday. Not till Monday. Everybody has traveled. So you mean people that have gone to Kano for, they will now come back uh, on Saturday. We all know now. Nothing will happen now. Amen. Praise God. So thank God. <laughs> <laughs> all things work together for good. So it's public holiday for awakening, actually, that God has given you. So let's be here tomorrow. And you, you can see the weather. It rained around one. I thought it was going to rain today. It rained around t- after 12, midnight. Yeah, when I was done with praying, it started raining. I said, rain, you have behaved yourself. Put the rug outside, it won't rain. So this week is rain free. Amen. Amen. Even to rain again, it'll be Friday around night. <laughs> Early morning of Friday to rain, then to be clear sky. Until after then it rain will resume um, next week. And without flood this time in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So we have some pastors that are here with us. Pastor Israel Aigbogbe from Benin came all the way from Benin <laughs> to be here. Pastor Ezra, please stand. Let them let them recognize you. Avon of Greatness Church. He's been here once. He's my 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 brother's friend. We met him Benin and and he's he's just following and connecting. Um, I don't have sons in ministry. I have colleagues. He's a junior colleague in ministry. I don't I don't have sons yet. That is my son. My colleague, a junior colleague in ministry. Um, that. God will help us connect with that. There's a very strong connection there. And then we have um, a prophet, Ulu Ali um, He's gone to the lounge. Um, Pastor Anthony Nwodo, Living Faith Church, Piakasa. God bless you. You came for the video, right? I saw you at the video. God bless you, sir. When you were praying, I knew you were a pastor. Amen. There was a pastoral anointing. Then Pastor Odi Martins. Salvation Ministry is a friend of our house. It's a friend of our house. I think it is my, my time, the time that I've invested listening to your senior pastor is what has brought you to this church to be my friend. Um, you know, it's a very practical. I was teaching once on giving. Very, the most practical teaching on giving I've ever heard. He was explaining if that so sparingly Shari sparingly, he that so bountifully. He says, small farm, small harvest. Big farm, big harvest. Can't be simpler than that. <laughs> small farm, small harvest. Big farm, big harvest. <laughs> That's the whole grammar. He that so sparingly. Small farm, small harvest. If you plant farm in 10 by 10 feet, you cannot go and harvest with trailer. Very simple. God bless you. Pastor Samuel Lesomi, bless you. And our own very Pastor Sam, Dan. God bless you, sir. Thank you for honoring us with your presence tonight. So let's receive my, our pastor from London. <laughs> Holy Hill, London. Pastor Tosi Shoko. Holy Hill Church. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. This is like a dream. <laughs> I know when, when, when most of us did not see me at BMC on Wednesday, you know, you would just be wondering what's happening. I was transiting then. So it's good to be home. It's good to be home. It's good to see everyone. Uh, many new faces. I love the church. Wow. I didn't know this is the expansion that you've been talking about. Wow, this is beautiful. Wow, we've taken so much time tonight, and I just think we should just uh, share the goodness of God and as, as we leave. But please, let's, let's invite someone to church tomorrow, and let's come early. Is that okay? All right, so let's share the goodness of God in fellowship. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. See you tomorrow.